Hello everybody and welcome back to Wapwellville for a little bit of Friday night action. I've got a couple of figures here. This guy's going to be sort of our main event here. Because people were wanting to know, well, I've done a few non-metallic metals and oils. And people really haven't had a chance to see much with optic source lighting and oils. And I just chucked these couple of skulls on here real quick. Some flaming skulls from Green Stuff World. I thought, well, I can do a little bit of OSL over here. Plenty of chance for non-metallic metals, that sort of thing. Now, since oils are definitely more ideal for doing multiple figures at a time, I've got a little ring wraith here from Lord of the Rings, Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game, whatever. It, it's a simple enough thing. I thought, well, in the meantime, again, while we're sometimes waiting for paint to cure on this, we'll mess around with this guy. I have a couple other things that I might pull out here to... Now, the oil paints in question, and you can see them over here on the palette. Here's a burnt sienna. So I put this in the container myself, and the mix is just straight up burnt sienna. And a high quality thinner like this one here. This is from Speedball. Megan, how are you doing? Yeah, look at this. Reasonable hour for me, and it is officially... 12 hours after that last stream ended. So yay, yay me. <laughs> sleep, who needs that? We don't need no sleep here. Hashtag no sleep. And so each of these colors is going to be different though. Sometimes you're mixing more like 50-50. Sometimes 55-45. Sometimes 65-35. It depends on the paint. Each one is going to be different. Then we got Armored Wolf in the house. And we got Yesik. Yeah, that was... uh. Let's see, I think it started at about 2.30 2 in the morning my time, and I think it ended at about, well, 6.20 in the morning my time, something like that. Now, we are going to be playing around with these, since we are doing some object source lighting. And remember, we played with these on the Caracola bust. I'll show you that in a little bit. But this, this to me, tells me, well, this can be somewhat effective as a fluorescent paint, because look how it's driving the camera nuts. Because the green one doesn't do that. If, if, and if you take, okay, here's the here's an acrylic version, and you can see it, it does the same thing to the camera. See how it makes it go bonkers? That lets you know that there's a Mike Disney in the house. Everybody, give Art of Mike Disney a follow, because, well, if you were watching him last night, you got to see Pictionary, and you got to see the huge controversy over training, or shall we say training camps. Yes, indeed. Now... Mike and I, at some point here, we are going to be doing our little, speaking of oils, we're going to be doing a little old co-stream, too, where Mike gets to play with his oils, and well, I get to play with mine. He's also going to need sponges like this, like I got, and I think he's probably already got those. You can also cut those up into some smaller pieces here. And what we'll do with these guys is we are just going to throw that little bit of a pre-glaze on them, Yes, indeed. Well, let's see. Uh, prob uh, Sunday, I would think, might be the ideal day for that. Okay, over to my right, which is actually to your upper left, is the palette. Palette's pretty darn simple. You'll see this several times. It's a piece of parchment paper. It's the same stuff I use for my wet palette. And it's a piece of cardboard. Literally, that's it. That's all you're seeing. The idea behind this is that it does soak up a little bit of extra little bit of extra paint there. Not a lot, but just a little bit. So my, I just get those, you know, where's a bag of them here from Amazon. They're just, they're this cheap. I, mean, I think four or five bags of these cost five bucks or something like that. It's insanely cheap. We got Al Capone in the house. Okay, so maybe, uh, well, we'll have to figure something out. Because I know Kathy has her broadcast, what, from 6 till 8.30, something like that. So we got our sponges. We've got our brushes here. And yeah, these are just your usual number 8 round craft brushes. And this is something that we were talking about last night. And there was, for whatever reason, there was a lot of uh, questions about the brushes. And I just kind of had them arranged like so. So if to the left over here, you got your Winsor Newton Series 7. That's going to be your most expensive brush. 
you got a go-between brush here that's still a sable, as you can see, still a red sable. And then you've got another Winsor Newton here, but this is the Cotman. So this is your this is your not sable right here. This is a synthetic. They all kind of do a similar sort of thing, but cost is different. And also availability might be different too. Usually easier to find the continents. Okay, here's another thing too. Let's see if we can I don't know if you can hear that sound in the jar. Every one of my jars has a little chunk of metal sprue like this. So how are you doing Al Capone? Nice to see you again. These don't corrode or anything like that because it's pewter. That's why they make miniatures out of it. So these are I have a bazillion of these things we actually just keep little blister packs of things like that. And speaking of blister packs, somewhere around here, I think I've got... Where did you go? Ah. So mixing the oils is pretty darn simple. You take a blister pack. You take some of your oil paint. You chuck it in there. You take some of your paint thinner, white spirits. You put that in there, and you keep putting this in there until this becomes the consistency of miniature paint. And don't be just chucking the paint and the and the stuff in the bottle and try shaking it. That's not going to work. you got to mix it by hand. Sorry, folks. That's the only way you can do it. Because if you try the other way, you'll end up being sad. I know people are always looking for shortcuts. Shortcuts aren't always necessarily ideal. So what we're going to do is put our quickie little glaze on these guys. Primer is also quite simple. It's your Badger's Dino Res. I think this one is light flesh and ebony flesh. Yes, it is. You don't have to airbrush it on. You don't have to do any kind of Zenithal stuff. I have painted oils over just brushed on ebony flesh. It just doesn't matter. It's just paint. It's just primer. That's all it is. Let's not turn it into a big federal case. On the palette, titanium white, cadmium yellow, light, cadmium yellow medium. There's your fluorescent paint. Again, that's from Marion Street. Terra Rosa, that's a purple matter there. Ultramarine violet, ultramarine blue. That's a pale green, yellow ochre, raw umber, your ivory black, olive green, Payne's gray. We're going to begin sort of with the Payne's Gray and the Olive Green, all that kind of stuff here. Actually, let's get a move on with this gay right here. Uh, Al Capone asks, uh, doing well. Looking forward to seeing your work on these. Well, I hope that it's been fun for you. And, Mike, I hope it's fun for you, too. It's just like 3D printing, right? There's there's a learning curve. There's things you just got to... Sometimes you just got to find out the hard way. It's like, wow... Why did my face just get kicked in? Oh, that's why. I won't do that again. So sometimes fun times await you. That's that's all I could say. Now again, we're just going to not be super careful here. And I always have to remind myself uh, not to speed this up because it's oils. It, it's It's not going to dry in a couple seconds. It's not like acrylics where we have to sort of Oh, kind of rush through this phase. Now I'm just, it's a mix of greens, a little bit of the bluish gray in here, and you say, okay, what's the deal with that? All we're trying to do, you know, I'm getting actually a little bit of the ultramarine blue up here, look at that. Because when we start to put lighter colors on this, you'll see how dramatically they are affected. And I'll show you some stuff along the way here like one of the more recent dark store tutorials where just this initial glaze affected the secondary colors so much it was pretty wild oh let me see uh looking forward to it rocky's war room uh, so folks that uh, people were asking well about 12 hours ago about the podcast that's going to be happening tomorrow night oh i believe nine o'clock central that would be the the your war room podcast so tomorrow i'll be putting links to that up on a little facebook post or maybe tonight something like that so people know in advance but what i'm going to do 
is I'll be streaming right up until about 8 o'clock or so tomorrow. At least that's the plan. And then kind of pause, reset things a little bit, and then I'll just continue the same painting again on the podcast. So that should be very fun. As we welcome in Damio, how are you doing? Yes, that is my preferred. If you're looking at, okay, how do you address a certain person here? Galactic Overlord is always accepted. You know what? I'm going to cut these into some smaller pieces. But yes, you, you can't go wrong with Galactic Overlord. Other lesser titles are accepted, but what's appreciated is Galactic Overlord. So we got a couple smaller pieces there now. That's going to let me get into some of these areas. And look what that does. See how, look how much is coming off, but strategically, because we're using strategery here, we leave some of that behind. As we got an Oliver Ghost and the Roy experience in the house. How are you doing, Roy? How are you doing, Oliver? Uh, let's see, rough guesstimate, how long do you wait for the oils to set before using the Brindley brush? There is no set time. Sometimes it's immediate. Sometimes it's an hour and a half later. There is no direct correlation to timing or anything like that. It's it's partially a feel sort of a thing. Now, also, too, it's how many of these are you working on? You know, are we working on five of these at a time, three of these at a time? So you can see the idea is I put this stuff on here, then I do it on this guy, then I go back here, then I go back over here, and if I feel that either one of these is just too wet, well, you know, I've got another thing here. Maybe I just drop a few little things on this while I wait for this to set. Essentially, the miniature is going to tell you. If you try and put paint on there and it doesn't stick, the miniature says it's giving you the middle finger and it's saying you need to take a different approach. And so that that's the the miniature will take charge and let you know. And then eventually you just kind of start to instinctively know before the miniature gives you the finger that it's about to. Let's look at the difference between these two here so you can see it's not just darker but you can see there's a little more blue over there. You can see the top has a little bit more of a greenish tint to it. Uh, let's see, uh, Roy is watching while he works. Always a good idea. And we got a gray ghost. We got Oliver ghost and gray ghost. We got all the ghosts. But yes, you don't want to be hasty. You want to at least five minutes, even if it's just five minutes. That's better than nothing. The Ideally, oh, maybe maybe ten minutes something like that, but at least five. You, you can't go wrong with at least that much. Now, I will eventually show you some of the pirates that we were working on last night. But here, I'm going to get some brown over here. So we're staging stuff here. We're going to just throw our initial little glazy glaze things on Mr. Ring Wraith right here. Oh, let's see. Well, I'm glad, actually, that, uh, that you're thinking about giving the oils a shot. I... I know it can be a little crazy, a little scary trying new things because, and especially something like this that really is, it's a different, it's a different animal, that's for sure. But, I mean, you can always ask me questions, of course. That's no problem. If you ever run into a little issue or something like that, because Mike has been generous with his time on the 3D printing front, and oh yeah, Mike, I'll have to show you while we're waiting for both of these to set up and dry. I can show you some of the prints yesterday. Well, I was kind of pushing the last of my supplies to the limit. And I had some failures yesterday, so I just kind of shut the whole thing down. It's going to be too hot anyways here for printing. And I don't have any more alcohol. I have I have gloves now. So all that stuff is on order, and it's not going to get here till next week, midweek, or late week, or something like that. So... If I'm doing any 3D printing next week, it's going to be the Ender 3 trying to print out terrain. <laughs> That's going to be fun. Uh, Roy, this is not just Payne's Gray. It's Payne's Gray. It's a little bit of olive green. It's a little bit of the ivory black. And it's a little bit of burnt umber. And I'm switching back and forth kind of randomly between all four. Yeah, all four. So this is more of the umber right here. 
especially as I get down towards the ground. Underside of Mr. Horse here. At this point, I just want to make sure there's something there. This is the other advantage of oils, is that normally, in the past, I wouldn't have been able to paint this thing stuck to the base. Now we'll go back with a little bit of Payne's Gray. Again, it's all very, very much a glaze. Very much a glaze. Okay, I do think we are ready to start removing some paint. Here's Mr. Sponge again. Uh, let's see. Watch you want to work? Let's have had some failures as well. And maybe it is just the heat everywhere doing weird things. And let's see. I'm ex I was expecting them to be wet for ages. Al Capone says, I noticed that the oils have two phases. One is when they are dry, but if you really work them, they will move still or rub off. It, it's, it also depends on which paints you're using. It's going to depend on, well, your primer, too. Obviously, we love the Badger Stino Res. That's what we're always using here. Let's get one of these smaller sponges now. Be a little bit more judicious here in some of our taking away of the paint. Let's see. Is olive similar to sap green? It's pretty close. I'm thinking that the sap green is a little bit warmer, maybe. And I'm thinking that the olive green is... It's got a little more brown in it, I'm going to say. Whereas the sap green is just a touch brighter. Yeah, if if you had to... It's almost like you combine sap green with a touch of Van Dyke brown or something like that. Or maybe a touch of raw umber. So you can see we got a little more green here. There's some differences to those colors. Yeah, let's just take away a bit more. Just a bit more. Okay, and we got one more here that's, so you can still see there's a difference there. And you can see there's a difference here too. So if you look at this one, you can see a very obvious shininess to it because we just put the paint on there here. Look at this, just a matter of minutes. This is already starting to look more dry. Uh, so yes, it, has anyone in Canada here know where I can order Steiner Res reliably? Um, that I, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> That I don't know. Sorry. Uh, let's see. Oh, and Tutti Frutti, how are you doing? It is Friday paint time with an angry ham in the house, too. Uh, let's see. I'm just looking to make sure I'm all caught up on the chat. Now we got Deadbeat Artist in the house and a Dr. Tentacle. How are you doing? How are you doing? Okay. While we let those set just a little bit longer, we'll just show some recent things here. So... These were both painted in oils. This one, I think, actually, you can probably still see the original VOD of this. This one's up on the YouTube channel, so you can watch this one being painted. This one's from Mantic there. And, oh, and now this is funny. I, this is one of my old, one of my few remaining old figures. It's hilarious because I took a, an old Ring Wraith figure, an Empire head, re-sculpted that head a bit, an Empire Staff, and I made Sauron on horseback, which, of course, now there's an official Sauron on horseback. So that was kind of fun back in the day, doing that little project right there. Now, here is another one. And, and what we did was, this, this is part of the, the Patreon page there, we did the same sort of glaze that you see here. Then we started to put some of our lighter colors over the top, and the idea is that those lighter colors... They were influenced and affected by this initial glaze. And you're going to see the same thing here. Uh, let's see. White spirits will certainly move them. Feels like the more spirits you add, the faster the initial set is. It's, uh, it should be very... Here we go. Here's another one. So this was also painted in oils. There's no anti-shine or anything like that put on here. And thalo green and thalo blue are shiny colors. So you can see... The oils don't have to be shiny. They they don't take forever to dry. Basically now, if the thing's not dry within 10, 11 hours, I'm really shocked. And I mean completely dry. Uh, let's see. Oh, well, I'm glad, Damiel. I am really glad. Because it's just, like I said, it's so much freaking fun. It is so much fun. So what we are going to do next 
is we are going to, where's my, so we got another little brush over here. What we're going to do is take some of that fluorescent. We're going to take some of that. Look at that. That's the purple matter over there. That is just so sweet. Look at, but look what's happening here. You hear that sound? That's me really scrubbing the paint into that brush. We're really scrubbing that paint in the brush. And look at the light touch we're using. Practically just these two fingers. None of this. Caress the brush. Don't crush the brush. We're also going to turn up our brightness now because we've got that initial stuff covered. Oh, let's go up one more. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Just looking at the chat here, making sure I've got everything. They only sell the three packs of different shades. Yeah, there's, uh, I don't know exactly how many, but I think they're up to at least 18 different colors now. There are some, well, what would you want to say? Some basic sets, you know, the, like the black, white, gray, I think, is one. Then there's a set of six, which is black, white, gray, and maybe ebony flesh and slate or something like that. So you can see I'm just starting to play around here with a little bit of where does my light go? Now, ah, here we go. Of course they don't have the red one. But you remember these guys here? The last time we were doing some object source lighting. And there's one in red. Of course it's the one that I don't have. But you can do something like this. So you can see where it's hitting him. We're just kind of putting it vaguely aware our light source is. Let's say we were doing blue flame or something like that. Well, that one's kind of, here's a green one. So that kind of, see how it's telling you where? That can, these are just pennies on the dower. Pennies on the dower on Amazon. Uh, I think you've inspired a peel. If you look at YouTube, it's all about oils. Yeah, it's been the surprise because what's weird is until I did the Twitch thing, nobody cared. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, I started doing it on Twitch, and everybody's doing the oils. And I'm thinking, so that's interesting. How come they didn't care at all for three years? No, more like four years. Because basically by this fall, I will have been using oil paints for four years. It's like, where have you folks been all this time? And if, if folks... If there's any doubters out there, just go to my Facebook and take a look at my Facebook Live sessions. It's kind of like it was kind of like this before that I was doing any kind of Twitch or even YouTube Live. I was doing Facebook Live. You can see we're already starting to just remember we do that object source lighting right away, just like what we were doing here on our Sisters of Battle. This is my new army painting series, which we're actually changing over to oils. We're switching in midstream, quite literally. Uh, let's see. Second person I see using oils, and I stumbled upon this stream by a lucky accident. Uh, Al Capone says that I uh, got him started on the oil kick. Uh, and Dimitri Frasinko, yeah, he's... Uh, and I guess Vince has started doing them also. I just want to make sure I'm getting all of the, uh, I think we're pretty well caught up. But so look at how we're just dusting this over the top here. It's, it's We're not going crazy with it. But we're starting off with our object source lighting. Remember, we need to get a little bit of that up here. Because we saw that. We saw as we were shining that little flashlight on there, we saw a few places that we're picking up some of this light here. So let's just get this in here right away. Let's get some on the underside of that hammer, like you do. Uh, maybe a touch over here. Again, not very much. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you found all you YouTubers about sponsors and dollar bills. This channel is educate. Oh, okay. Hello, little harmons. Spark my ganja. <laughs> Yeah, I try to, uh, I guess because way back in the day, and I mean way back in the day, on, on the old Cool Mini or Not site, people would just post, they would post all kinds of how-tos, 
just for free. There was no money for it. It was just they would post these articles and they made a huge difference for us. So, I mean, in some ways, this is kind of trying to pay that forward a bit, I guess. Here, let's get the front of this thing here. Ooh, there's another play. We need to get just a touch of it under here. Now, here's the thing. Every time I touch this, I am picking up some wet paint. So that's why I have to go back and get some fresh stuff. But you can see in a matter of seconds here, we're already starting to establish a wee touch of a glow there. Now, cleaning the brush. This is probably the other thing where people maybe are going a little bit sideways. So this is my container of that, that thinner, right? Most people are probably dipping their brush in there to clean it. Whereas, what do we always do? We give it a thorough cleaning with our paper towel. Literally, this is what you're doing. That keeps this brush nice and dry. Keeps it nice and dry. Oh, Angry stumbled upon Marco. Uh, <laughs> lays the blame on me. Well, I guess, uh, I, I don't know. Is it because I'm trying to guilt people into doing it too? And just, uh, it's sort of like the person that, that says, oh... This fish flavored ice cream, man, it's really good. You've got to try this. It's it's fish flavored ice cream with chocolate chips and hot sauce. You've got to try this. This is fantastic. Oh, you don't know what you're missing out on if you don't try the fish ice cream. You've got to try this. It's fantastic. That's me being a little bit evil. I think we're all pretty much caught up there as we get a little bit lighter on our flames there doesn't take long to start to establish a bit of a glow does it we don't want that getting too yellow we want to make sure we get some orange in here ah look at that so that is the thing that we found out early on and in just a second here I will show you the most folks here are going to remember seeing that uh, let's see I would try the ice cream Odile Thin uh, and let's see, two do salmon. Oh, salmon flavored. Well, hey, that's when your ice, ice uh, fish food is brain food, right? So now you can say your ice cream is officially brain food. You need ice cream for brain health. So, yeah, I mean, and if you if you had, had carrot flavored ice cream, that would be good for your eyes. I mean, it's got all that that good carrot stuff for your eyes and vitamin D or C or whatever the heck is in there. Oh, and Bilbo's brush in the house, too. Oh, let's see. Showing how things can be done. I'm a rather stubborn, though curious person. It's the butt. Well, we got to show the bust. I keep talking about it here. Let's just let this sit for just a wee second here and let us go to the thing that kind of started it all. I think this is this is probably the thing, too, Al Capone. Where's my... Where'd you go? Where are you? There it is. Boom. That's probably the thing that got this whole thing kicked off. <laughs> Deadbeat artist hates, loves fish, but hates ice cream. That's an, that's an interesting kind of combo of no right there. That, that's where you actually use the fluorescent green and fluorescent yellow or orange for the very first time on that thing. That's why Blackheart models, that's the Caracalila bust. That's it. And that was all done with oils. Uh, I did weigh that thing. Now, I'm not convinced that it only weighed 14 pounds because I exercise with a 10-pound weight on each arm. And those two things together, that that bus feels like more than just those two things together. So I remain unconvinced that that was the official weight of that bust. I'm still going with 300 pounds. Now it was for Damia. That was, that was kind of the clincher there. Well, I guess because people did get to watch that for 11 hours, wasn't it? Yeah, that was about an 11-hour stream-ish, something like that. Well, it was two streams. Part of it was 11 hours. Oh, you know what? Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to fudge here. We're going to fudge that and just say, ah, what the heck, a tiny bit of that light reaches all the way up there. So this is basically exactly the same as our approach on acrylics. This is done with acrylics. That's done with oils. Is it really any different? Uh, just that this is easier. <laughs> that's that's the difference. It's easier. It's faster. 
I would have really loved to have been able to do this in oils. This one's actually on the YouTube channel as well. You can watch this one. Well, actually, all my Sigmar stuff is on the YouTube channel. You can watch uh, this one right here, too. That's on the YouTube channel. Oh, what does Odil say? Uh, I think Jiva has been successful in teaching to paint their layering style. People looking to get better. Uh, we know the carrots are just propaganda from the Brits to keep people from figuring out they got new Hello, radar. little harmons. Spark my ganja. <laughs> <laughs> and random internet bumping into each other. All right. Thank you so much, Willie the Rat, for the follow. Gandalf also appreciates that. Now, actually, let's let's play with the marble here. Let's play with the marble. What do we want to do for marble? Uh, uh, maybe, maybe a touch of this blue, touch of this green here. And we'll just... Play around with this real quick, like, there we go. It has to be on the darker side, just because, well, we've got all that lighting going on. Now we're also going to try and lighten up. And look at this. Hear that sound? You can hear that. You can see it. Doing a couple of things. First of all, it's thinning out the paint on the brush without having to add this to thin it down. Also gives me a nice little filbert brush here, and then look at this. Look at how little paint is on that brush. But watch what happens over here. Oh, look. Hashtag plenty of paint. Hashtag more than enough. You say, what the heck's going on there? Remember that glaze that we threw on there at the very beginning? Well, that very dry brush is mixing with that liquid there. It's basically extending the paint. And we got a Kathy in the house. Now oh, let's see. Now the the oh that's right. The pyro club wouldn't begin till seven at the earliest. So okay, I'm thinking. Wait a minute. She's probably oh she's not even watching Doctor Who yet because it's not seven. Holy smokes. Uh, let's see. Not that there's anything wrong with paint, but to call it as conspiracy that quite a few manufacturers make paint lineups also generally promote that style. Hashtag all the paints. Uh, do to do. do Oh, thanks, Damiel. I appreciate that. I will be showing a bunch of different Patreon stuff here over the course of the broadcast. I'm going to take some of this green here. Some of this, basically, it's just a bluish, greenish gray. And what are we going to do? Just like what we were doing around here, we're going to do that now. going to do that now on some of the armor here. I don't know what the heck we're going to do up there. Do we do some freehand? Do we do some the typical blue? I don't know yet. Man, maybe we'll just do a typical blue sort of thing. Just keep it more of your standard Stormcast colors. Maybe not. We don't know yet. We don't know. But what I'm doing here, you can see we're just sort of mixing in here our original glaze with a wee touch of the that new just look at this it's a gray there's nothing fancy going on there uh, let's see let's see if, well, if the oils really does it for me then i'll have five paints that i use well oh thanks for reminding me do we got a brace in the house we got a brace in the house we do hey bryce how are you doing i know it's been a while since we've had a chance to do our hangouts which is kind of weird given the fact that Everybody's kind of stuck, so my apologies that we haven't been able to do one of those in a while. Well, getting rid of Google Hangouts didn't help either. That was not helpful. And Zoom can be, well, <laughs> it can be a little weird, uh, or a lot weird, actually. Uh, hashtag 10 paints. Uh, let's see, it's a wonderful system for using their paints. I have done stuff with the GW paints. Ah, well, hopefully, yeah, I, and I'm going to be doing more of the, oh, shall we say, North America friendly time. So actually, I'll be doing this again tomorrow. Not quite sure when I'll be able to start, but I'll certainly be doing this again tomorrow. So again, using our oils here. You can still get that beat up, totally beat up brush there, which makes it just perfect. It makes it just perfect for, oh, look, let's do a little bit of, let's lighten something. You know what, maybe we go with a the gold there, maybe not. We'll see what happens, but 
Let's start to generate some even slightly lighter tones here on this boy. Now we're also going to take a somewhat smaller brush here. Just another synthetic. I'm going to see what I can do for some green-ish. Mm, maybe not quite that green. Maybe something more like this here. Let's see what we can do marble-wise. Haven't actually had a chance to do marble with oil, so this here is going to be really fun. Uh, I'm already thinking it's going to be a bazillion times easier than uh, with acrylics. Oh yeah, that's going to be easier. <laughs> Why? Because, here, let's uh, do a wee bit of blending on this. Now, I'm trying to find a place where it's not shiny for you and not shiny for me. Look at this. Look at how easy that is to blend. Hashtag no problem. Now over here we got to figure one of these sides has to be sharp, one has to be blended. We'll blend this side here. Oh look, how easy is that? I'd say that's pretty darn easy. Just push this around, look at that, we can push this stuff around. Can make changes to it like so. So much easier. Wow. It's almost criminal how easy it is. Oh, and Landrest is back in the house. I watched one of the contrast videos. Ah, now was it one of the, was it one of the more recent ones, like the the 72 mil Barbarian Girl? Or was it one of the older ones, like the Song of Ice and Fire one, where I was doing the Sky Earth non-metallic with the contrast paints? Okay, so now, thin paint sticks over thicker paint. We are actively now thinning this down with those white spirits. And the idea is, oh, look at that. You can see how that that's going to cover a little bit more. People say you can't do tiny details in oils. We say hashtag yes, you can, because all that was done wet into wet. See all those little tiny tendrils right there? All done wet over wet. Bilbo's brush says it looks like sculpting colors. Well, geez, don't we a lot of times just say we're sculpting with paint? Now, yeah, someone sculpted the miniature, but we've got to we've got to enhance that with our own sculpting. And we're just kind of sculpting with paint here. Look at this. We're gonna do a couple of more of these little tendrils right here. You can see how they're nice and subdued. If we want to knock them down even more, we can do that. Look at that. Take that down just a bit more. So that weren't so hard. Now at this point, if I want to get any lighter with that, I got to go the opposite way. So now this is actually much thicker paint that we're going to throw on here. And look at that. You can see how that stuck. If it had been as thin as the previous layer, all it would do is just wipe it away. That's all it's going to do. It's not going to stick. And also you have to remember that you're picking up the previous color of paint, the previous layer of paint. As we welcome in Orcris Gaming, be sure, be sure to give them a follow, folks, if you're not already doing that. Uh, let's see. Oh, Mr. Blunderfoot, how are you doing? Let's see. I don't think so. It was, uh, it was the, uh, oh, yeah, okay. Oh, that the, the cave door. Yes, 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 that's right. Well, I hope that was fun. Uh, let me see. Damn, I'm constantly floored by this. Ah, he did a foolie. He did a foolie. He is floored. Now, if that was if that was just an accidental foolie right there, that was that was quite the foolie. I mean, that was uh that was that was quality work right there. That was quality work. Now you could see, look, we're going to just go up here. We're going to start messing around with some of this. Again, this is slightly thicker, but see how it's picking up the paint that's already there. It's starting to pick that. We're going to do the same here. But you could see how it's getting a little bit dirty on the end of that brush over there. Now let's take some of this off of here. Let's do just a bit of blending again. 
Let's just work this around, around his head. Taking advantage of what's there. Oh, like right here, we know that's going to have to be brighter. Oh, gee, somehow we didn't get any cerulean blue out on the palette. Let's do that. Well, let's see, uh, <laughs> praising Nurgle. Uh, let's see. I'm just looking to make sure that we've got everybody included here. I know sometimes it advances a little bit faster than I can read. Mr. Plunderfoot, glad, glad you're doing great. Uh, doing great after last night's overwhelming victory. That's right. Although, are the are the results being disputed? Uh, did they have they uh, disputed the referees' calls? I don't know. There was some there was some somethings going on in that that stream right there. I'm thinking that the the referees might have been uh, might have been a little bit of blood bowl going on there. There was a hospitality fund exchanged. I don't know. It's it seemed a little iffy to me. Oh, I'm gonna go light over here. So I'm just working some of this cerulean blue in here, just cause. I'm gonna work some of that cerulean blue over here, just cause, and over here. And again, you can see where it's a very it's a light application, but we're letting all that gray do some work for us. Because why not? We are going to take some of our Payne's gray here. We're going to mix it with a little bit of our initial glaze. And we're going to start to put some darks in here again. Real quick here. Let's get it over onto this side. We need some... And we're going to go film noir, don't worry. We will go film noir. Although, I don't know, maybe early would be the time to do some film noir. Oh, there are some new chat reward point things. So if folks want to check that out, there is some new stuff going on there. Okay, let's... Uh, you know what, let's do the... That's going to be our violet right there. That's the ultramarine violet. We'll just pop this right up here, and then we're just going to leave that there for now. I'm just going to sit this up here, leave it there, just so we know it's there. Hey, purple and green makes gray. Bryce has never heard me say that, ever. Like, never heard me say that. But if a color goes somewhere, it's got to go everywhere, so... Get some of this violet down over here, too. That and green have a tendency to cooperate with each other, at least. And we're going to get again, some more darks over here. We're thinking probably some green reflections, too. Look, we're going to throw some purple over there. Some violet over here. It's, it's going everywhere. It's going crazy. Ah, look at this. Dr. Tentacle knows how this works, and Calvadia, they they have just reaped the Silver Pharaoh. What are we talking about here? Do you dare to enter the Tomb King's palace here? Do you dare enter the Tomb Cities of Susenes? There you go. So this is my last Warhammer army that I did. I'm thinking this was 2014. This is my tournament army for Adepticon. And there's about 120 articles on this on the blog. That's actually not the entire army. That's what I could fit on there. And there's actually been more painted since then. And you can, those two guys right back there, see the uh, the Hyro Titan and the Colossus. Those were scratch sculpted. We've got a little bit, there's your, there's Susenes himself on his chariot. You can see there's been a wee touch of conversion work done on the horses. And, oh, just a wee bit of freehand on the bases. Yes, uh, I became officially a verb to be tomb kinged. So this is yet another one. You can see we kind of made our own little howda for, uh, oh, I don't even remember what the heck that thing was. 
whatever it was, it got shot like on the first turn of every game and everything died. But see, there's uh, some freehand designs there. So that is, there you go. Those are your, that is your Tomb Kings. There was internal lights. What you can't see is on the, the roof of that. There was actually a star field that was done with, what are those, uh, filament lights? What is that, fiber optic lights? You can see there's some other interior lights. There, you can see the freehand on the interior. There was uh, obelisks and stuff. It told the entire story of the army on every single movement tray. It said, in hieroglyphs, all those who enter the tomb cities of Suseni shall suffer a fate worse than death. And there will be more pictures of this army because, and like I said, go to the blog. There are over a hundred different articles on that. Out Balzacious and Mike Disney combine for some of this for Dancy Dance time. There we go. Do, 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 do. And the Stormcast says, what do you think you're doing here? He says, man, fine. This is my stream. Uh, let's see. There we go. Teeth brushed. And I see we're getting some of the good stuff. Uh, Autocorrect ruined my joke. Uh, and Megan, uh, I'll... I'll never look at elbows the same way again. That just sounds dirty. Oh, let's see. Uh, el okay. All right. Oh, where else are we going to go with some of this purple here? Okay, we're going to throw some over here onto our... Uh, hey, you know, fingers are useful too. Hashtag use all the digits. Thumbs, all of them. They're all fair game. It's all good. And we're going we're gonna to let this set here still. We have to fit. What are we going to do up here? What's going to happen with that? All right. Maybe that's also going to get some of the purple there. So, okay. A touch darker there. Oh, look. It's already doing its little blendy thing. So those are taken care of now. Let's start to go a little bit lighter up here thinking that that's going to be gold it's far enough away from our light source that I think that will work just fine and now we're starting to do a little bit of sketchy type stuff here a little bit of sketchy things okay, we're taking that brush getting rid of some of that extra paint what are we doing we're just going to chuck a few of these right here here, let's just chuck some more paint on this and see how fun oils can be. Let's just chuck a few more things over here. Just slinging paint. That's what we're doing. Let's just get a... Look at this. Oh, it's it's carefree. It's totally carefree. Look at that. Uh, let's just chuck some of that right over there. Okay. couple of ways. Now we can mess around with that. We can take something to use as a as a blending brush here. And we can just start to do a little bit of soft blending like that. We could take our smaller brush as long as we get the paint out of that. So I want to make sure that that's centered enough for you to see. Look at that. Look at what happens there. We just kill those little edges. So look, we got three straight. There we go. We got three lines over here. Well, not anymore. That one's gone. That one's gone. And that one's gone. Uh, painting well, not using fingers would make things a bit harder. Yeah, well, you know, there's hashtag no thumbs, right? No opposable thumbs. Oh, it's Doctor Who time, so Kathy will be back at 8. Well, maybe. She might be back at 8 unless the there's the Pyro Club and they're doing their thing. But here, let's let's grab this. What are we doing? We're just taking that little bit of paint, and we moved it over. Take that paint, move it. That is how we keep this from becoming an almighty mess, because... You will create a mess in quite a hurry if you're just, again, too hasty. You cannot be hasty. 
Don't be hasty. What does Treebeard say every freaking time? Don't be hasty. Oh, let's see. But thanks again, Mike, for the gift subs. They are definitely appreciated. They will definitely be going towards purchasing more oils, which, well, I definitely need more oils because I've got to try out some of these, well, basically the genuine cadmium colors and some of the genuine, well, actually I don't have any cobalts, so <laughs> I just got to get those, period, because I don't have any. And we're just going to go to the top of our, oh, hammers, I suppose. Geez, after all those Baratheons, the last thing I want to be seeing is hammers. Looking forward to doing the Osiarchs in oils for sure. Uh, there's going to be some Lumineth. Those will be in oils. Pretty much everything's going to be in oils at this point. Because just circumstances are such that, well, it's very possible to do it, usually with conventions that can sometimes wipe out oils as a possibility for weeks and end, and we don't have to worry about that. Let's get this lighter here, too. That was as much taken away some of that purple that was there as anything else. Ooh, let's see. Let's uh, hit this guy. We got this over here. I got just a big old stripe of paint. Well... It's about to not be a stripe of paint anymore, because, oh look, we just got that a little bit blended, didn't we? Uh, let's see, we got a belt over there, we got to figure out what we're going to do with that. And now, let's play with a little bit of, oh, just a little bit of our golds here. Again, not a whole bunch of paint. We do not need lots of paint. I'm guessing that's just a, either a hammer and a book or something. I'm just kind of guessing. It's sitting up there on his shoulder here. Let's uh, start to throw a little bit of our gold up here too just to have that. Because they always have the gold crown or halo or whatever the heck it's supposed to be. Hashtag don't care. We're letting all that stuff mix right into our gold mix there. Uh, let's see, I want to be closer when the magic happens. And Odil then asks, what oils do you use? They are, at this point, they're all Windsor Newton. And I will show you in just a flash here. We'll let him sit there. Now, as far as a starter set, oh, thank you so much. Damn it, oh, thank you. Thank you, for, oh, thank you so much for the donation. Okay, so that donation right there. This on Amazon is a set of 10. So these are Winton, but they're still Windsor Newton. You could get this. And you could get this. And you could get a package of these right here for that donation right there. So just think about this. I got these four years ago. Look at how much is left. And you know I use these a lot. Even this will last a regular person quite a while. And those brushes will last a regular person quite a while. So just think right there with that donation. You could get basically everything you need to kind of get started in this. Now, when you get to something like that, it's a little different story. Your more your regular oils like raw umber, burnt sienna, those would be about seven, eight ish dollars for a thirty seven mil tube. This one's a little bit different. This one was probably nine-ish, something like that. That is the that's the starter set. It's a set of ten. Oh, no problem, Odolthen. Odolthen, sorry. Now there are colors here. When you get to something that's a little bit more exotic, this is going to be more like eleven, twelve. Then if you get into your cadmiums, you're looking at more like eighteen. You get into stuff like the cobalt, like the cobalt violet that I I need to get. Well. The original price is 43 bucks on Dick Blick. Fortunately, you can get that for more like, oh, geez, uh, I want to say 27-ish dollars, something like that. So let's cool this down. Get Look at what we're doing. Look at how we're just scrubbing that brush. 
We'll lighten this up just a bit in a few areas here. Minimal, minimal amounts of paint here. There. Let's get up here onto this halo. Oh, that actually has a little bit of an edge to it. Okay, that's good to know. Didn't know that originally. Maybe those... I'm just looking at what else might be something that's not just a silver type color here. So now we've got a little bit of a lighter lighter tone. And again, there's not... I just want to emphasize that you're not doing the layering up. There's no layers in oils. There's no... What's a base coat? As you can see, there's really no base coat. It just sort of happens. Oh, look, there's a little lightning bolt thing there. That's interesting. Again, minimal amounts of paint here. If there's ever too much on there, you just take a sponge, you just wipe it off. Who cares? Who really cares? Now, let's see. Angry Ham is curious of the colors on the bust's horns. Some of those were fluorescent. Actually, I'm going to just throw a couple of strokes here. And as we wait for that to just settle for a few seconds, we'll go back to the Calvadia. No, not Calvadia. That's the, sorry, the Caracolila bust there. Okay, so we're, so we're starting to develop some of our, what would be our golds there. Where is my, there, we're almost there, almost there. There we go. So especially in the area of the seashell, there was a lot of the orange and the fluorescent green. We did mix some of the fluorescent green and phthalo green together around her eyes. You can see it has that kind of a greenish tint there. And the fluorescents were also down on the chest. You see on her shoulders, we used a little bit of it over there too. Uh, let's see, Dick Blick is 50% off right now. Oh, geez, how long does that last? I didn't know that. Well, is it all products or is it just uh, select things? Because if that is the case, <laughs> all right, what are we doing here? I'm going to take our larger brush. We're going to do some softer blending here because I also want to take some of this paint away. And look what's going to happen here. So look, we just got a nasty old brush stroke there. Oh, look. Brush stroke be gone. We got something similar over here. Look at that. The brush stroke is gone. We got another one over here. That brush stroke's gone. What stays behind is a nice little bit of a blend there. We can just take that, pull that paint right along. Again, getting rid of the stuff that's in the brush, moving that down. Get rid of the stuff that's in the brush. And over here, what am I going to do? I'm just going to get rid of some of the excess here because we don't need that much. All right, that, that's getting rid of some of our excess of the purple there. Oh, I'm just going to fluff this out to good enough. Okay, now we'll go back to some lighter tones again. Going to hit this with some some more of my cerulean blue. It's got a little bit of yellow in there, so it's actually going to turn a touch of the green. That's cool. That's all right. Let's get some brighter stuff going on here. On that bit of armor, maybe even a little reflection on his feet. That certainly needs to be lighter. Oh, let me see. Uh, wish I had offers like that. Could not find those paints even though they're UK made. Uh, well, actually, here's the thing. So I know it's not the starter set necessarily, but let me show you something. And this could be intriguing for you. So the regular Windsor Newton oils, well, look where they're made. Made in France. There we go. So made in France. And it's kind of nice because you can see exactly what is in them. So linseed oil, safflower oil. Because not everything has safflower and not everything has linseed oil. 
and not not all of them have both either, which is just I thought that was kind of interesting. Here we're gonna get rid of some more of this, and we'll get a little yeah reflected light on there. Remember with the oils, thin sticks over thick. We always have to be aware of that. So let us take. Now, oh, first I'm just gonna get some of that paint out of the brush here. Oh, let's see, still a rebel. How you doing? Um, actually, no. There was no sleep basically. Um, because I think I might have gotten to sleep at around seven ish, and then by ten thirty or something like that, or eleven, it was. Is right back at it again. So yeah, there wasn't, there was not a whole lot of sleep. So if I stumble and bumble on the words, now you know. So see how the shoulder changes just a touch. Let's get this cloth back here. All it is is just a little bit of that French ultramarine, a little touch of the white there. Angry Ham dabbles with the fluorescent, may dabble with the fluorescent colors. The, and I would definitely suggest if you're going to grab any of those, grab the purple. And, duh, I'm working with, see what I mean about words? Wording not happening. Hashtag no words. Grab the orange. Now that's not a surprise because what tends to happen is that the orange is usually the best of the fluorescents. I don't know why. Someone who's a chemist and makes paint, they would know. But let me see if I can find the... Oh, and also, these Wittens, they come in sets of six. Now, there's no white or black in here, but you could always just get those. You know? I mean, that's a... Look at that. Red, yellow, blue, a green, a tan, and a brown. That's, that's not too horrible there. Now, I wonder how many liters of paint has hit that thumb. Well, we, that's what we call it, the thumb palette, for sure. Ah, here you go. So there's the fluorescent green. Now that one, I have to say, that one didn't thrill me. So, and see, look at the screen, how it's not going bonkers. Look at what happens with the orange. Look at, look at that. You see how that's kind of like iridescent there? And this is kind of like, yeah, it's a bright green. This stuff definitely does the trick. Now, I'm going to put this back over here let me look at let me show you this there's none of that fluorescent green on here that's just phthalo green phthalo green mixed with cadmium that's the, that's the key this is actually where the luminosity is coming from that and the phthalo green so like I said try if you're going to try any of those fluorescents try the try the orange <laughs> try the veal I don't know whatever we're here all week Let's see, there's also a set of 10, which is about 7. Yep, yeah, that is this set here. Right there. That, there's your set of 10. And like I said, I use those all the time. Uh, I'm just going to look and see, do I, am I missing anything? No, I think we do got all of the chats there. Oh, let's just get a touch of lighter purple there. I'm going to chuck a little bit of that over here. The color goes somewhere. It must go everywhere. Here, let's get a little reflected light here. At this point, reflected light is going to be a big deal on this guy. For sure. That's what's really going to give you your, your metal effect is reflecting light, reflecting colors. Just reflecting stuff all over the place, pretty much. Uh, what's the fire base colors? Basically, uh, we've got the cadmium yellow pale, cadmium yellow deep. That's your fluorescent orange over there. And then just your titanium white. And actually, you know what? I'm going to let this stuff have a moment to chill. Good idea. Good plan. Good plan. Let's uh, start to get some lights down here with our fire. So we're just taking that cadmium yellow pale. We are mixing it with our titanium white. And we're just looking to get the brightest of brights here. 
on his skulls. This is, uh, yeah, this is actually, I want to say it's actually easier than the, than the acrylics doing the fluorescent, well, doing the object source lighting actually easier than the acrylics, which is very cool. Yeah, let's get a little bit lighter with the fire over here. So, yeah, see, now we're starting to really get that white hot fire source kind of thing going on. Oh, let's, uh, yeah, have some fire coming out that eye. And now we're going to grab some of our chamomile pale, a little bit of the fluorescent orange there. You know, I got to get some of the other, that other yellow. It was just getting a little bit too pinkish. That's ironically the same thing that happens with the acrylic paints. Same darn thing happens. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Ooh, let's get some of that cadmium yellow deep mixed with. Where's that going to hit? I think it's going to hit right here. There. Yeah. And we're going to thin this down a touch as well. Uh, fluorescent paints have chemical optical enhancers, which pushes their perceived reflectivity so high. Yeah, we, we had a chemist look at the, uh, years ago, he was looking at the acrylic version of fluorescent paints, and basically he said, look, from all I can see here is that light will pass way more efficiently through this and back out to your eye, and it just that's what enhances, like you say, that's what makes it look that much brighter just because so much more of the light reaches you again, much more so than a typical typical color would. And it, it seemed perfectly plausible and reasonable at the time, that's for sure. Here, let's see if we can't get a little bit more of our orange down here. Got a little bit of a bristle or a spray. Our hair going on. We need some of that over here too, but maybe just a bit more of the orange and a little less of the yellow. Oh, we need to get some under here. Almost forgot underneath there. And let's see. So we got his hands. We got this. Oh, that doesn't quite reach over there, but it will reach over to here. Gonna start to thin that down. Uh, nerdy antidotes. Now, Elida, how are you doing? Thanks for joining us here. Uh, let's see. Without dark, there is no light. Book of Wapple. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So actually, what we will do... Oh, okay. Yeah, that that's another little reward that we can do there. Let, let's have a little redemption of the Book of Wapple. Let's do something like that. Actually, there are new chapters that have been added. A new chapter. Every time something is learned, a new chapter gets added. And, of course, as Mike Disney uh, suggested, anything that pertains to 3D printing, that would be the New Testament of the Book of Wapple. So we'll have a reading or two from the Old Testament here. So from the Old Testament, the ancient tome... You don't build a house starting with the roof. So what did we start with here? We started with our object source lighting instead of tacking that on. Because that's going to control that's gonna control everything that happens on this. Any brush can be a blending brush, right? Have I just basically grabbed any old brush and used it as a blending brush? Oh, fewer lines, more shapes. You're actually going to see that kind of on this guy here, where I sort of put a line of paint down, and then what did I start doing? I started to s scrub those out into shapes. Oh, and once again, for oils, all you oil painters, there shall be no gratuitous brush strokes. Where did we learn that? I will show you. I will show you. That was this one right here. So this was our latest. You can actually still watch this stream right here. I think that's God Slayer miniatures right there. Remember, we were having fun with the wings. So this was all painted in oils. And do you see anything shiny on here? There's no dull coat on this. There's nothing on this. This is just straight up paint right here. No shiny. 
we did freehand everywhere our non-metallic gold all kinds of fun stuff so that's where we said no gratuitous brush strokes every brush stroke is sacred every brush stroke matters now we've been putting a bunch of brush strokes on here what do we got to do we got to start to we have to start to kind of blend these guys out we've been adding the paint there now we got to start shifting it around moving it around uh, let's see without youtube tutorials there is no james wapple you can add that too ah that uh, actually someone can just uh shoot me that as a pm or something like that or a whisper that could be good mm, but you know what screw it i'm gonna have some fun here and just chuck a little bit of my orange over there just a bit just a little bit that's all you know what we'll let a little bit of orange get there you can see we only went so far with the orange on this because that should be blocked right there maybe a little bit of it here too just a bit right there mm, let's get some down here too not again not so much and probably not a whole bunch over here either but we gotta start getting some reflected light on those too gotta get some reflected light over there so we're gonna take some of our again our yellow here some of our fluorescent orange and we're just gonna drop that paint there I'm just gonna leave it there just gonna leave it oh numbskull in the house well, oh actually speaking of which I'm glad you brought that up because last night it be people asked they said so what about awards and stuff what what did you ever do well Back in the days when, now we never specifically did things for painting contest, but these are from, well, when they used to hold games days here. So that's, that's some of them right there. Actually, the art contest ones were very fun. I, I always uh, had fun at the art contest. I actually got some of my drawings that I did for those art, t art contests. Let's go to some of the other Adepticon stuff here. So look at that. There's Bilbo's birthday bash. Oh, I love that tournament. That is actually that little trophy right there, the best appearance, little glass thing, an operation sting. That's the most recent trophy right there. You can see I got some crystal brushes, you got some Reaper Con stuff, and over there in the upper left hand corner, those are the army painting uh, awards from Adepticon there. So there's, yeah, the, the crystal brush, there's about 15 of those, and somewhere around like 12 of the Golden Demon things. I know they were going to be doing that again at Adepticon this year. Uh, obviously, it didn't quite go the way people were hoping that it would. Now, look, at, we're going to get some ultramarine blue here. Ultramarine blue. Let's get some dark going over here. You must have dark to show the light. We just heard that, right? Well, here's some of your dark. Ooh, look at that. It's got a little bit of the purple working its way in there, too. So there we go. So it's not just darker. It's also got some blue in it. Here, let's get rid of this paint. Let's start to mix some of this here. But we need some reflections of a secondary nature. We need some secondary reflections. Can't just be flat like that. It's not really going to be looking much like metal. So what are we going to do? We're going to do something like this. Get some of this darker stuff in here. Oh, like this. That's more like it. Then we're going to blend some of that. Huh. You do. You can add that. Can you add freehand while that paint is wet? Most definitely. So I'll go back and I'll show you. So we just took those and drew those right down. So you have to figure with this marble right here, we painted this all while it was wet. And this one right here, again, you can still actually watch the VOD of this. This will be on YouTube, but all of those little tendrils right there, those were all painted on while it was wet. As was uh, this, you know, I'm just going to leave this one out here. 
So all that freehand was painted while it was wet. You see those tattoos on, on her skin there? Those were painted while everything was wet. So it can most definitely be done. I'm just going to get some of these guys out of harm's way here, but still have them where I can reach them. So here's some more examples. And actually, I think you can see these on the YouTube channel, I'm fairly certain. So there's, uh, see there, he's got some more. That was wet over wet right there. Some tattoos over wet oil paints. Oh, thanks, Angry Ham. Uh, it's appreciated. It is definitely appreciated. Uh, and we'll, we'll try and maybe do something there on that shoulder pad that's more interesting than just, well, that. We're also going to take one of our very beat up Series 7 brushes. And this is a brush that was destined for the garbage can because it had like one hair, one and a half hairs on it. It was useless, completely useless. For acrylics, however, for oils, it has new life. It's fantastic for oils. Who to thunk it? We're just taking a little bit of our burnt umber over here. Oh, let's see. Oh, yeah, that's uh, actually I just took some group shots of that, and I'll be posting those probably to Instagram. Remember some of those other kind of Viking style figures? Yeah, I've got pictures of those with her. Remember the raven that we did? So what I'm trying to do is just get some darks in here. We got plenty of lights going. We need some darks over here. So say we all. So say we all. Uh, thank you so much. Kiwis, thank you very much. Here, let's have the happy dance. He's gonna, he's gonna, whoa, he's gonna catch that one. And he says, uh-uh. He says, yeah, that's mine. He says, nope, get out of here. Oh, well, so much for Wapelius. He gets chased away every freaking time. He never gets to have any of the fun. Here, let's get some darks down in here, too. This is where it's going to get some fun, some fun, fun, fun. Okay, we are actually going to... We'll just clean out this one right here. And we're going to take some of this. Ooh, let's grab a touch of that purple in there. So we've got that dark brown, some of the purple. And we're going to do a little bit of glazing here. Yes, we're going to glaze wet oils over wet oils. We're getting this nice to about, oh, gee whiz, close to 90-something percent. Just our white spirits. Let's do something with these handles here. It's a little too much the same. But look at what we're doing. See how we just touch the brush to it? We're not actually drawing the brush. We're just touching it. That's all we do. We just touch the brush there. We're going to do it on the other side now. And that's going to fill in. Look at that. kind of fills in the, our little gaps there. I'm even going to... Use some of that here. Look at that. See how that's kind of dancing through our little, little recesses there. Why? Because oil paints, they've got actual capillary action. Uh, let's see. Damiel, mine blended while wet. Might have used too much white spirit. It had a f Oh, yeah. Yeah. That is the, the key. Actually, when you're doing the free hand, let's say you kind of, you know you're about to do it, and you say, you know what? I'm actually going to paint a little bit thicker here because the whole idea is if I paint a little bit thicker there, now I can actually thin that paint down to do my freehand. But there will be times, and it was like that. Here, let me show you some of these little tiny guys. They're still kind of on the wet side here. So let me, where they are, here they are. So let me just grab this guy here. So with this, I'm looking at how tiny this dude is. And we we painted him all with the oils just earlier today. You can still watch that vod there. To to do the eyes and that sort of thing. Well, you know, I had to be sure that I let that paint just settle for a bit. And here, see, look at this. I can still manipulate that paint. I saw a little bit of a rough spot there. So even after several hours. I could still manipulate some of that paint. That's very nice. 
Now back to back to some of our little exercise in glazing here. Again, we're just touching the brush. That's all it is. Otherwise, we do more than that. It's all going to be coming away. We're going to just chuck some of that over here too. We got some like a purity seal we need to deal with there. We'll deal with that too. Gonna get some more of my white spirits in there. But thank you, Kiwis, for the three month subscription. That is appreciated. Oh, and I'll, I'll send, uh, I'll be sending more videos to the subscribers. So basically, some of the Patreon videos that really do uh, something that really goes along with, say, the latest live session or something where there was a lot of questions. What I will do is I will send some video links that normally go to the patrons of the Patreon page. I'll send those off to the subscribers. So hopefully at some point late tonight I'll get a chance to send off a another email with, with a fun video for the subscribers. And it, it's always appreciated, folks. Believe me. And Damiel, I'm going to have to send you some videos there too. So be sure to shoot me a whisper or if it doesn't let you do that just send me a friend request or something like that well actually no I think you already have seen those never mind never mind okay let's get some light over here and that's gonna be our cadmium yellow now this is this is gonna be much thicker right here because there's there's thinner paint there now I've got to go the opposite direction so it's gonna be thicker and look at how that sticks. That is actually very thick paint that's sitting there. Now we're going to go over here. And look at that. So if I kept thinning that down endlessly, that was not going to stick there. Now we've got plenty of yellow. Let's go with some green. We have not had green in quite a while. Let's go with some of that here. And green on the golds. Uh, we have a gridlock sis in the house. Hey, gridlock. Uh, again, folks, be sure to give gridlocks a follow if you're not already doing so. Oh, look at that. Look what that green does right there. So we have this nice hot kind of orange here. Then we get into that kind of a darker gray sort of a deal. And now we're now we're into this weird kind of grayish green. Again, nothing says golds like greens and purples. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. It is true. Here, let's get back to some of that cadmium yellow deep. Let's go right along here, like so. Not quite sure what we would want there as any sort of a symbol. Uh, just let's see if we can think up of something that might be interesting there. I don't know. I don't know. Oh. What would we like here? Well, we'll just we'll wait on that for a second until something just kind of pops into my head. But I do want to be able to show you guys some freehand there. So again, this is a somewhat lighter color here. It's going to go right here. Again, it's thicker. You can see you can draw nice thin lines with the oils. Certainly no problem whatsoever. Now, if we keep going with this thicker stuff, eventually it's not going to stick. It'll be too thick. It will be too much of the thick, and then we'll have to go the opposite direction. We'll back over here. Let's lighten this up along this edge. Like you do. Oh, let's get some of the pieces of his halo here, too. Let's get some light over here. So his head's starting to, starting to come forward just a touch. Let's get some lighter colors on his helmet now. It's getting to be that time. Alright. Can start to bring out more edges over here too. 
Again, I can always go back and do some blending of stuff. Here, let's go and get some of my, my, my kind of orangey-yellow. Uh, do, 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 do we have a lady bee in the house? We do have a lady bee. How are you doing? This is definitely oils again. You will be seeing a much, much greater percentage of oils. It just, it's kind of the perfect storm right now. It, it actually is very, it's very handy for doing lots of oils. So there will be plenty of oils going on. That is for sure. Now I'm going to try and thin that down just a touch so I can get down in here. And that looks, okay, so we've got a hammer over here. I'm just going to try and draw this thing out real quick. There's a hammer, I'm guessing. And potentially a couple little lightning bolts to come off of that. So we'll just very quickly map these things out. What I'll also do is get in a little bit closer to once we start doing some of the smaller details. We, just, we don't want to get bogged down into small stuff just yet. We want to keep working larger. Here, let's start to get some more interesting highlights on some things. We can still do some blending here too. We also need to start getting things like that. See that little extra, little bit of extra line there. We got to do some of these vertical, these linear effects here. Let's get some of this stuff a little bit lighter now. We got Drax in the house, another person that you definitely want to give a follow to. So I heard that you were you were taking the night off last night. Was it were the eyes just kind of driving you too nuts, or did you not want to have to deal with any more assembly of things, or both? I could see both. Now let me see. We have another question over here. Yeah, if that makes sense. Uh, do you get paint textures if you overwork? You will definitely get those. Oh yeah, you'll definitely get the paint textures. It's kind of one of the. It's one of the easiest ways to see if you if it is getting overworked is you'll see, well, you'll see the signs. The signs will all be right there. So I'm going to take this, remember any brush can be a blending brush. So here's kind of a mid-size brush. Now look at look at over here on this, this knee. We've got nothing but some brush strokes there. What's going to happen? We're going to start tugging away at the end of that. And now it's blended. But look what we just did here. Look what we just did. We basically blended this right up to our little, little, little highlight right there. And then left it be. We're going to go back into here. We're just going to make sure we don't have too much paint piling up there. I'm, this is intentional. I'm actually trying to remove some of the paint there on purpose. I want that some of that to be gone. You also have to keep in mind with the oils, some colors are just very translucent and other ones are more shiny. It's not like acrylics where the colors have a tendency to all be very similar to one another in, in terms of consistency. Oh, let me see. Uh, and I see you, uh, Lady B. Oh, Magnaris, how are you doing? Let's say I learned a lesson today about not trying to start metallics in black while using oils. Yeah, it's even though the oils are very tempting to work dark to light because it makes it makes sense just like pastels, right? Pastels you typically start dark to light. With the oils you really do want to start from more of a color rather than just something flat that's for sure here let's uh oh wait 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 what are we doing here let's get some yellow on this no actually maybe a little bit of orange on this oh good you can see that there a little bit of reflected light maybe a little bit more i think we've got his hands pretty well set with our reflected light. We're going to try and blend this guy here. I've been left, leaving this guy for a while here. I wanted to let that paint sit there. 
Look at that, how we just blend that right out. Uh, let me see. I was uh, learn a lesson today. Uh, Thursday and Saturday are off days. And damn, yeah, so thank you so much. I was not sure I was doing it right until I came back here. Well, I'm just I'm glad. I'm really glad that it's that it's helpful because I, I know I say this all the time. I've seen so many people get frustrated with miniature painting, and it's something that they might have loved for years. And then all of a sudden, they just, they can't stand it. The last thing they want to be doing is painting miniatures. Which, to, to me, that really bums me out because, well, yes, I, I do this for a, a living. But if I didn't have to do this for a living, I'd just be doing them for me. And I really enjoy the heck out of it. So it, it matters to me that people enjoy their painting, not just... I mean, yeah, it's nice to get things done. Everybody likes getting stuff done. But it's definitely nicer to have some fun while you're doing it. Let's get some of that fluorescent orange into here. I think that will do it. Let's hit that just a bit. I am going to thin this down because we got it pretty th relatively thick here. So what we're going to try and do is get a couple of our... There it is. There's a couple of lights here on this uh, dragon scale male. Now, let's see. Kiwis, I enjoy it even when I hate what I've done. So I feel I'm in a good place with this. That's uh, that's always good. I, maybe it was just a couple of folks and I became super hyper aware of it just because of you know how they were sort of reacting to things. But I just saw that and I said, "Oh man, I gotta, I gotta do something here. There's gotta be a way to make things more fun." Uh, now, of course, there is one way. It's sort of a scary way, and that's to try new stuff. Trying new stuff can be scary. You know, new materials, new techniques. Because I've seen painters that, well, they've they've learned something. They they learned some kind of technique, and that's their thing. And that, and they're going to do it every single time, all the time, until it really starts to get repetitive and boring. And then they just don't want to look at miniatures anymore. And again, that's just, that's not a, that's no bueno right there. Oh, Scooter wants Film Noir. Actually, I've got to make a chat point reward thing for Film Noir. I just, I didn't have time to make the graphics today. I was adding the other graphics for the uh, Susenes there for the Tomb Kings chat point reward. But you are right, Scooter. It's time. It's time to go film noir. Zoink. There goes the color. It still looks like a glow, right? We still have, even at this early stage, we still have lights and shadows. You can clearly see the marble. But all the color is gone. Let's bring back some of that. So this is value contrast. Again, this is something you can do with your phone. Take a picture of it. Use your phone app. Make it black and white. Now let's bring back our color. Look at that. We've got a color. Here, let's just not have that. We have bright orange versus a muted green. We've got some cool grays over here. Bouncing up against an orange. We've got these muted purples over here against some increasingly lighter golds. Back over here, see we we've got our our purple. Oh, let's get uh, let's get something on this. I'm just gonna call it a purity seal. I know that's probably not what it is, but we're gonna take some umber and we're gonna mix that with white, maybe a little more umber. Let's see how we're scrubbing that brush into the palette there, getting rid of that extra paint. Now, sadly, the freehand no, is we all. No, we all. the freehand is already sculpted in there, as we've got oh it's Sindrian. Thank you so much. Oh, Armored Wolf is doing that thing again, doing the thing with the subs. Thank you so much, folks. Be sure to head over to the Armored Wolf Etsy page uh, because right now there's a, there's a Nurgle dice bag of goodness. That's being worked on, and it is quite amazing. I mean, the texture and everything. 
on all the bags is amazing, but this, especially those Nurgle bags. Now, we need a reflection over here, too. We got nothing going on here. So look what we just added there. I'm going to take some of this lighter here, lighter green. Look what's going to happen over here. There's another one. Now we got this lighter purple over here. There's another one. So let's uh, yeah, let's just do a little bit more with this lighter purple. That, again, that's just uh, ultramarine violet right there. Nothing fancy. There. Now I want to direct your attention over here towards. That's not the one. This. So take a look at that armor there again. You got some shiny armor going on. It's not so much on the calf. You can't really see it there. But see their chest plate. See all those reflections that are going on there. And look at down their their glaives and 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 such or their greaves. Sorry, and uh, the stuff on their knees. You can see all of that now. Another example here. We got reflected light. Right, we got a horizon line. So we're going to try and get some of that going over here. Now we're going to grab a blending brush again. We're also going to get something to drink. One second here. So sorry about that. Let's do some blending again. So we got all of these these stripes right here. Well, let's let's start killing some of the edges on these stripes. Oh, like so. See that? Now we've got this one up here, above it. We're going to do the same thing to that one. Boom! It's gone. Uh, let's see. Oh wait, the one true brush, Vecnon. Sorry that I had to kind of, I know you came in this morning, and then I was like, uh, gotta go, gotta go get some sleep. So I will get you your one true brush, because that's what we're using. The one true brush. We worship the one true brush. See that? All hail the one true brush. And quite literally, that's the number eight round craft brush that costs five bucks for a pack of 12, but it's still the one true brush. Let me see. Let's, uh... Oh, yeah. That's actually very important. I'm trying to find the Book of Wapple. Oh, and you must have Dirk to show the light. I'm trying to find it. Oh, so many good readings. We'll do those. Well, we'll do those later. But for those that did not get to see... Well, they come in... Gr well, they're not green handle anymore. They're gray handles. But there you go. Four ninety nine. There's 12 of them. And as we were showing last night, when they really start getting destroyed, uh, let's that's fine when it's really kind of getting beat up here. Now that's not really ah. Here we go. So you got one that's like this. That's starting to kind of show some of its age. Look at what we can do here. Chopped off the bristles. This is now a stippling brush. It's a spatter brush. Bilbo's brush has a question. Does warm light cast warm shadow or does it cast cold shadow? We always, in art school, it was if the light is warm, the shadow is cool. If the sh uh, light is cool, the shadow is warm. We always just went oppo with it, and it seemed to be a real handy kind of rule of thumb. It always seemed to work for me, especially with watercolors and such. So see that school bus right there? That was a good four or five pounds of resin at least. And I was using those, some of those cut-off brushes to do the spatter, to do the chipping, do some of the streaking there. So, yeah, you can do an awful lot. Oh, actually, here's another ace case where I was using those brushes. Where did my... Where's my ships? Where are my ships? Cruel seas, cruel seas. There we go. So I was using a brush like that. See some of the chipping and stuff on there? Yeah, some of it was a sponge, but I also did... And those are 1-350 scale ships. Now, we talk about all these art terms here. Uh, let's see. 
Drax asks, did you list the colors at the start of the stream? I'll tell you in, in a second here. I'm just going to go over some of the old 2D art that we, we try and show every time. So this is watercolors on hot press watercolor board. Same there. You kind of get the sense that I, I really like painting faces, love doing the portraiture. But here we got some of our pastels. And you can see how, yes, that's yellow. But look, there's greens in there. There's like purple, brown, red. There's all kinds of colors in that. There's another little pastel here again. You can see how we're using the directional strokes. And again, there's no airbrush there. That's just a brush. See that star behind the planet? That's just using a spatter brush. I did that probably 25 years ago, 30 years ago, just spattering paint there. So here you can see some of the colors over here. Titanium white. Actually, I think I might have knocked this just a bit. Let me move this over there. Titanium white, cadmium yellow light, cadmium yellow deep. That's the fluorescent orange over there. Terra rosa, purple matter, cav violet, ultramarine violet, ultramarine blue. That's our permanent green, whatever. Uh, that's what the starter set. I think you got that one too. That's raw sienna there, raw umber, ivory black, olive green, Payne's gray. And the purple here has mostly been that violet color, that violet ultramarine. Now, oh, look at this. There is nothing going on here. Holy smokes, we can't have that. We can't have that. Let's get this lighter here. There we go. That's why none of this was making sense. None of that was making sense. We also have, look at this, basically just a long brush stroke here with nothing going on. Oh, look at, looky there. That's blended now. We need to do the same thing over here. Over here. We got nothing happening here. There's a whole lot of Zippo going on there. So... Look what we just did there. I just chucked some green into there. Why? Why not? There is actually a little bit of a reason because we've got this greenish marble. There you go. I wanted to reflect a little bit of that. Reflect just a bit of that. Now here, let's uh, let's blend away some of this now. Little bit of blending going on there. Let's do something here with another bit of reflected light or something. Yet we also have gotta figure out what's going on with this thing. You know what? Let's do some some kind of gold here on the end of this tabard or scabbard. Yeah, well, this is the scabbard right here. Let's do something on this. We need we need something more going on there. Here's a little bit of our lighter yellow color. Okay. And here again we've got our kind of our, our yellowish I'm gonna go with even more of an orange here. So that's Terra Rosa. That's mixed with a little bit of our cadmium yellow. Go even more with that here. Again, Terra Rosa, we're mixing it with a little bit of our brown. There. Hmm. I'm going to go with some of that here. Some of that, oh, definitely here. And up here. Uh, okay. Apparently that's some kind of a weird strap that doesn't really continue anywhere else, but we'll just put it there, whatever. Ooh, let's get some green. Let's throw that over here. We might even go darker with that. Yes, let's go darker. Just took some of the raw umber, mixed it with green. And now we'll go lighter. For sure, right here. Yeah, that was the thing to do. Let's get something on that edge. I 
I'm going to have to go a little bit lighter in there. And we, oh, geez, we certainly got to do some stuff here on his hands. We got nothing going on with the fingers. Very little that's going on over here. And we're going to need to do some sort of a horizon line kind of a thing. So first things first, we're going to smooth that out. Ooh, green. Let's get this green going over here. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Courageous Crispy Cazette Franker Z. Oh, thanks. Uh, okay. Thanks for doing that. That's going to be cool. Now, how long do the clips, do the clips just stay there eternally? Or do you have to sort of, uh, like you have to do with the highlights and sort of kind of preserve those? Or do they just sort of stay there forever? It would be nice if they did. That would be cool. Or Thober Studio, folks, another person you need to give the follow to. As we add, look at that. We just added some of our reflected light over here. So I didn't actually get to ask how the how the birthday was a little bit ago. Oh, and there's a oh a cat herder. Subscribe with Twitch Prime. Thank you so much. Here, let's uh. Well, but he's, he's looking around. He's like, wait a minute. Those were coming from somewhere. And he says, uh-uh. Nope. These are mine. They're all mine. He claims ownership of the pyramid. My goodness. How selfish of him. Oh, we need to get some reflected light over here. We got a whole lot of nothing going on. That's just a bunch of dark. That's no good. See what we did there? We just added a little bit of reflectivity to that I think we could maybe even scooch in some more oh like right there oh let's scooch in a little bit more like right there this is it now that's got a got more going on there was nothing happening we got nothing going on here in this interior armor oh my gosh this is just there's nothing happening here. we got to do something which means it's time for some reflected light here. Something there. That is just his belt. But this needs to be lighter now. Ooh, let's thin this down. Thin this down. If it doesn't stick, we'll just go thicker again. Oh, thanks, Earthober. It's appreciated. Is there a Just Dices in the house? Oh, hey, Just Dices. How are you doing? Uh, folks, well, I'm sure you're already following Dices, but if you're not, you need to. Uh, are you guys... Oh, you must have just started the Pyro Club. Uh, and actually, now, is Rosie going to be riding any more Valley Girl Dragons tonight? Because I won't be able to watch tonight. Well, it depends on how late you guys go. Maybe I'll get to see some. You know what? I'm going to carry this over. Yeah. That's better. That's better. And then, and then, uh, let's see. Great doing loads of corn and a happy. Oh yeah, doing your uh, your thing there with the uh, the heavy gloss gel and the paint. Ooh, let us get some lighter stuff going on right here. So yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that the Pyro Club right now, at this very moment, they're doing their D&D &D session, so you can go check that out too. It's always, very, last last Friday I think was quite epic, that session. Quite literally, Valley Girl, Dragons, uh, I think it was Glitter and Glimmer and... There was some very dramatic things that happened, that's for sure. I'm just going to get a little bit lighter here. Again, that stuff that's going to be sort of mixed down eventually. Let's get some lights in there. Let's get some lighter colors going on here with the wood does hammers. Let's get some lights over here. Now we got to go the opposite way. We're going to add some dark. We're going to take some of that Payne's gray. So we're going to get a cooler dark here, if we may. Uh, I think we are caught up 
Uh, I think they just, you know, I think you're right because, oh, speaking of clips, yeah, the uh, <laughs> the D&D &D group there, they're all about the clips. There is some, actually, that's probably a clip from last week's game. You could probably still watch that. Oh, look at that. You must have dark to show light. We're going to do the same over here. Again, that's the Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray making that darker. It's not a glaze or anything of that nature. Hmm. Go oh, back to the... Oh, no. I'm going to take some of the Cerulean Blue here. Yeah, some Cerulean Blue. That's going to go right in here. And then we'll go... We'll go back in with our lighter white here and that is the titanium white just like we did on this side over here we got it darker now we can go back in when we add that light boy does it make a difference makes a big old difference there let's get some oh light along the top edge there oh and then whatever these are Possibly even reflect a little bit of, yeah, a little reflected light right in there. Why not? That that looks fun. Let's get rid of some of the paint in here. Get rid of some of that paint, and now, boom. What's going to happen over here? Let's get some reflected light on this, too. So we're actually going to use some green, believe it or not, to put reflected light on our purple shoulder pad there. Because together, they're just going to look like basically gray. Purple and green makes the best, the best gray. Something got to happen there with Mr. Belt. And we'll just take some of that Terra Rosa along with some of our dark blue and just hit that for now something on that tabard or scabbard sorry not why not sure why i keep calling it a tabard it's just words words not happening today i'm going to get some of this more reddish brown here on that i'm just going to call it a purity seal that's what it looks like to me uh, let's see, Lady B. Copper Bronze, white color scheme for the corn. Uh, I think I filmed out that gel too much on the bases. Yeah, it's it's weird. It can be f f finicky when you're trying to do something like the, the blood effect stuff. And it seems all good. And then sometimes the color is more transparent than you expect it to be when you mix you know the, the paint colors with it. It can always be, it can sneak up on you sometimes. Here, let's get, oh, look at that. Some nice dark there. We're also going to need some over here. Again, you must have dark if you're going to show light. Let's have some dark over here. We kind of... In all the quest to add the reflected light and other things, some of the dark went away. We don't want that. This can be blended a bit now. Same there. Where's my... Aha! So we haven't actually messed around with that, that triple zero yet. Let's start to play around with that, see if we can add some... other lighter things to his armor here. Oh, like something like again these vertical things what are they it could be some other lights that are kind of shining or whatever cavern that he's in or it could be another one of his buddies or something like that it could be just about anything but it's just real important to get some kind of reflections otherwise you're just not going to have metal you're going to have some nice shading you won't have any metal Like like here on his abdomen right there. We gotta get something going on here. 
And we also have his belt again. So we'll grab some of this from over here. Chuck it there on that belt. Oh, what the heck. Just going to throw a little bit of a earth tone color there. Now let's get some darker stuff going on. That is going to be your black and brown combined. Look at how much darker that can be. We'll grab ourselves a brush and we'll do some blending here. Just gonna take that, just kind of pull that right down here. Uh -huh. Ain't that easy? Would you rather have to do that with acrylics and do a bunch of glazes and whatever the heck else you're going to have to do? I'm thinking probably not. Look at this here. We don't even have to do the blend. We can just sort of scumble that in. Yeah, let's go a little bit darker again up towards the top. Sharpen up that line. Like you do. Okay, we got that purple in there. That's kind of nice. We need to start getting some lighter tones over here. There's like some some rivets over here. We did this on the other side. Now we got to do it on this side. And because that paint's a little bit thicker, it's going to stick. And look at this. Now we got some contrast there. So say we all. So say we all. Thank you so much for the subscription. Ah, Ford, Fitch. And we have a Techno Cat in the house. Thank you so much for the sub here. Let's have let's have the happy dance by Wapelis. He is always glad. Thank you so much. He says, okay, fine. You get to dance. That was another sub. You, you get to dance. Every so often, he still gets to dance. Actually, oh, you know, there's, I think there's more Wapleville pictures. That's right. There are more Wapleville pictures. So, folks, if you, I think it's the... Hello, little hobbit. Spark my ganja. Uh, thank you so much for the follow, KS Spawn Wargaming. How are you doing? Uh, that's appreciated. Gandalf also appreciates that. We're going to throw in a little bit more of our reflected light onto some of the s these scales here. Uh, let's just blend that out a little bit. We don't want to lose. Don't want to lose out on some of that nifty little shading there. Speaking of shading, let's get some lighter cores on some of the purples here like right over here I can basically do one brush stroke I gotta come back get more paint and I can do a second brush stroke gotta come back get fresh paint because if all I keep doing is going over and over the same stuff all I'm gonna do is just pick up the old paint and I'm gonna get no let me no new color there It'll basically just turn the color of what's there. And that is definitely not what I'm looking for. i got to get some lights on his fingers here. So how are you doing, Ford? Uh-oh. Technocat wants to see the Silver Pharaoh. So let's just paint a couple of fingers here. And I'll show you the pictures. Some of you have seen those already. But you haven't really necessarily heard the story of the army. And that that's something you can find on the blog. That's just wapeliusblogspot.com. All right. This is a case where I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to go that far. So look, just take it right away. So let's go all the way here to 20, well, between 2012 and 2014. There's that. So this army right here of the painting pyramid techniques back in 2013, I think nine of them were developed on this particular project. So all that texture paste that I used, the oxide paste, the sandy paste, the first time I used it was on this project. This is where I learned how to use the foam. I did fiber optic lighting in here. Uh, you, you see the basing there with all the, the, the demon faces. That turned into a painting. All of these things. This is where the fluorescent paint, if you're wondering where this got started, this is the project where the fluorescent paint got started. This is where it all began. 
And I'm going to keep adding more of these photos as time goes on. But look at that fluorescent green. Look at that fluorescent green, the fluorescent blue, the magentas. Ah, uh, you can see it here, right? See more of that fluorescent green? That was between seven and eight years ago when I first started to use the fluorescents like that. Uh, let's see, Chaos Spawn World Gaming asks, what artists do you, when, uh, when all the comp are, are closed? Well, for me, the, the competitions, it's, it doesn't matter because I don't paint things specifically for competition. I just take stuff from my armies. Actually, I can show you. We'll, we'll go back to, we'll revisit uh, these things. So that uh, the big armies on parade thing, that's just, that was for my army. Uh, you know, these were just my army. There was there was no special thing for those. Those were just literally my armies that I took and stuck in golden demons. But now, it kind of didn't really matter too much for me necessarily because my primary stuff that I do are YouTube videos and I do the Patreon page. Now we're adding a couple of darks here. Look at this. Look at what we're adding here. Look what we're adding there. See that? It's almost like there's, again, there's something that's maybe he's walking near. Or it's another light source, something like that. But then this, there's the Twitch thing. Once there were no conventions, I started doing this because I never had the time to do this. There's another, well, again, I I couldn't do oils all the time when there was conventions because, well, I'd have to just leave. I'd literally have to stop painting and head off for a week to nine days to a convention. That's not happening anymore. So it does actually let me use the oils more than I would have before. Now, obviously, this is very rough on everybody. But for me, well, let's put it this way. We already experienced something like this back in 2001 with 9-11. I still have a wall calendar from 2002 that used to, well, let's put it this way. It normally would have somewhere between 40 to 50 events written on it. There are zero events written on it for all of 2002. And that has basically been hanging on that wall as a reminder for 18 years now. What can happen there are surprises that can happen. There are things that you don't expect that can happen. And ever since then, we basically have been trying to make ourselves more immune to things like that. Which is why, well, I started adding things like the videos, the Patreon page, that sort of stuff. That's why I started to teach basically online as opposed to in person. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna smooth this thing out. We're gonna get some reflected light over here. We're gonna make some of that green. Uh, let's see the Roy experience. Have you checked out the Basil Gogos paintings? I haven't had a chance to do that. Uh, in, in between the twelve hours, uh, basically, I've gotten kind of no sleep pretty much today. I'm hoping to maybe do that after tomorrow, because it's let's just put it this way: it's kind of a crazy pace right here. Basically, all of my time was basically spent getting ready for this uh, this weekend here. That That's one of the unfortunate downsides of being self-employed is that no one can do the work except yourself. So, yeah, I, I don't often get a chance to look at all the stuff I'd like to. But I will check those out, I promise. Yeah, I might have to do that, like on my phone in the bathroom or something like that while I'm brushing my teeth, but I will try to get a chance to check those things out. Is there an Eep Jeep in the house? There is. How are you doing, Eep Jeep? Uh, let's see. I would have went army if it was a GW army. Uh, now, I can't wait for you to see the, the newest uh, Lady B, the newest group shots that I just took that have all of those kind of Viking figures in them. There's, let's do it some more. Now, again, if you go over to check out the blog, you will see a bunch of army boards. Uh, oh, and this two weekends from now, I'm going to be doing a bunch of historicals. And you'll be seeing lots of pictures of my 
Monte Casino display board. I really enjoyed doing that. That was so much fun. Here we're going to... So you can see we got all of these different little striations and things going on there. Let's get some green into this too. Again, thinking about some kind of reflections there. This, well, that's a little bit too plain. Yes, that's a nifty little smooth transition there. Still too plain. It's still too plain. We got to either go darker or lighter. Let's let's see what happens if we interject a little bit of lighter color here. I'm gonna take some thinner to this. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. That's what we'll do. I'll take our smaller brush here. Let's do something on the ends of these. Right there. And then we're also going to just put in, see that? We've got a little bit of, that's a little bit of a break right there. Just another point of light. And we're going to take our bl eh, smaller blending brush here. Smaller blending brush. Any brush, it can be a blending brush. Smooth that down. We'll do this on the other side. Uh, let me see. Oh, I'm going to scroll up here because I don't want to miss. Well, Ford was uh, finishing some heavy gear bots for a friend and working on some Rant Reaper and Pope figure. There we go. Uh, paint some offerings to my God and see corn. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ford is doing all right. Yes, the, the no sleep rules, that's for sure. Oh, my goodness. They are well in, in force right now, that's for sure. Let's get some, not just highlights on this side, but, hmm. I'm going to take this ultramarine blue. Let's see if I can't sneak some of this in here. Okay, ah, that's what that's what I'm looking for here. Okay, so we snuck some of this in. Sneaking some darks there. So can you see that light, dark, sort of a middle tone? Now let's get our... I think that brush just fell on the floor. Let me look for it here one second. Just want to make sure that, aha, uh -huh, that's where it went. That was my blending brush. We don't want that to be gone. And we're all going to blend this side. So we're going to get them at an angle where you can see it. We're going to blend that. Let's see we got a little bit of edge there now. That's that's nice. we got to do some stuff over here. We've been doing a lot of stuff on the front. Let's start to do some stuff back here. Let's start to bring out some armor. Oh, gee, yeah, we got to start getting some decent highlights on this back here. We got lots of middle tone. We got some darks. That's that's all good. But now we got to work in the other direction. Land dress. It doesn't matter if any brush can be a blending brush. Well, this one here, that my worry is that I would actually step on it because that's happened. And this one right here at about, I don't know, 18 bucks. That's not a brush I want to be stepping on. Because that I was like, oh, yeah, it's just a brush. And I ignored it, and I went, wait a minute. There's one of those brushes that should say Windsor Newton on it, and that's not here anymore. Maybe that's on the floor now. Now look at what we're going to do here. So we did that one on the top. Now we've got one that comes from down here and goes like that. We'll grab this one. And let's do a little bit of our blendy, blendy stuff right here like that. Not everything has to be totally blend. Let's just chill out on that. Same over here. we got a lot of hard edges. We're going to get rid of those. But you see all these, it's it's like lines on a cylinder. Well, that's pretty much all this leg armor is. It's just a cylinder. So that's why we're starting to put all of these different little shapes on it. To make it just look that much more cylindrical. That's kind of part of the evil plan there. 
We're going to straighten that out a little bit. We're going to, here, let's get some of our lighter color. Maybe thin it down. I think it needs to be thinner to stick up here. Which it, yes it did. Yes it did. We need to get this part of his armor plating. We're also going to have to add some more interesting stuff to this back plate here. That's just a little bit too plain. A little bit too plain. So we are going to do some of the same stuff that we've been doing. Let's take some of this green here. And we're just going to break up this surface a bit. There's some of that ultramarine blue. We'll make that darker. But we're also going to do something like this. That's not the one. Here we go. We'll just use this. We'll start to soften some of these lines. We'll soften a couple of these again. So that's starting to, again, make it a little more interesting. Here, let's get another lighter tone in there. Let's get the, let's have it catch a little light along this edge over here. One there, and for sure along this edge, Boom. Right there. See, look at all the. But see how this doesn't go all the way up to here. This doesn't go all the way down to here. That's a, that's kind of an important little fact right there, or whatever. It's gonna get some of our. Let's get some lighter stuff here, and then we're gonna have to go back the other way. Add some more darks. So see now we've got some. Some lighting that's happening here. I just want to make sure. Uh, yeah, it's uh, part of it is because Kathy, well, she has the day shift, basically. That's when she does her streaming. And that kind of just leaves me the nighttime hours. It would be kind of fun to be able to do this every night at this time. Unfortunately, I... Now, I'm all in favor of the creation of a 48-hour day because it means I might get three minutes of sleep. That would be nice. So hashtag 48 hours. I think everybody should petition for that. Now I'm going to take... Again, that's a little bit of the cadmium. We're mixing it with our Terra Rosa, which is going to make some nifty oranges that we can use here and some parts of our golds before we get in there with some greens you know what the hammer doesn't necessarily have to be gold maybe it does maybe it doesn't ah let's get the little bit of our that orange stuff going right in there boom that's better Back to, so speaking of orange over here, that's pretty well thinned down. I think you guys can see that. Going to get a little bit of an edge there that just kind of got a little bit uh, weakened. Let's do just some sort of... We'll just do a... Some kind of golden mask here. And maybe some sort of laurel leaf design around that. So I'm just kind of sketching something here. Not sure if I want to do it or not, but we'll just sketch that there if we like it. When we come back to it later, we'll keep it. Otherwise, we can just get rid of it. We don't like it. In the meantime, though, Going to add some lighter colors to a few things. Where's my, there's my orange over here. A little bit of this into the 
Hilu. Well, I want to compete with the object source lighting, that's for sure. Got to be careful about that. And that's looking a little too yellow, so that's why we're going to chuck a little bit of our fluorescent orange onto it. We got a beef in the hole. How are you doing? I'm going to get some more of my reflected fiery light here, too, on this knee somehow. We got to get some on this part of his armor here. That's how. That's a little too orange over there, or a little too yellow. That, that's, we're going to knock that down. There, the f there's no way the firelight could be quite that bright over there. That would be a little bit too much. Uh, no, that would be blocked. I'm just looking where things would be. That's the other thing with the object source lane. Sometimes you just have to look where some of that light source would be blocked. Uh, Roy Experience X, how many brushes? Well, basically. Oh, uh, let's see. Where's that? Where's my gray handle one? Where did you go? Ah, oh, you're around here somewhere. Basically, mm -hmm, that many, pretty much. I might have a figure throwing another one for good measure. So about that. Been just kind of going uh, back and forth with some of the different tables here. Once we got all of our once all that main body of stuff is in place, then we can start going to our oh, finer brushes, I guess, if we want to use that word. I usually kind of stay away from that. Let's see if we can't get some more of the cerulean blue on his head here, or his mask, or whatever. His helmet, ah, that's better. Yeah, that was looking a little too much the same. Back here, once again, let's start to put in some reflected light. We're going to go with our green here again. Not sure if you can quite see that. I hope you can see. I think you can. Yeah, you could You could sort of see that right there. Again, more reflected light. So important to make this stuff read as, as metal. Okay. Let's see what we can do with some of our our purple over here. Lightening that just with their white. What do we want to have happen with this purple cloak right here? Or whatever it is, his clothes. I think we're also going to blend that a touch. I sense a raid, and I sense an eeny meenies. I sense an eeny meenies, folks. That means we got to welcome in eeny and all of her fine raiders. And speaking of oil painting, if you're not already following... Oh, thanks, friends. If you're not already following eeny meenies, you need to follow because, well, she's doing oils too. And actually, I'm going to ask her just how her stream was going. So, Eni, oh, and Zambies. Zambies, you definitely want to give Zambies a follow, too, because, well, well more miniature painting, more Hello, better. Little hobbits. Spark my gun. Thank you so much for the follow, Screns. I appreciate that. And Vicious Bunny in the house, too. And Varl, Varlby Gem. Hey, how are you doing? So, Eni, were you doing... Uh, how did the stream go today? I didn't get to actually see what you were working on at all. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Hey, Vecnon. Oh, thank you. Thank oh, wow, we got to do the little happy dance. I know Eeny Meeny likes it when Wapelius, he does his dance. He grabs so the stuff. So and he says, that's me. That's for me. And he says, uh-uh. And he says, man, all right. And he gets out of the scene. And back comes our... Uh, and Zen for one in the house. Oh, thanks, Varl. So 
actually we've been switching it up. This is the first time we've done object source lighting with our oils. And yeah, that's actually fluorescent orange oil paint right there. That's right over here. See where I'm pointing? That's your fluorescent orange there. Mixing it mostly with the cadmiums. We're actually going to be going back down there to do some more with that. We've just been trying to get our cooler colors over here and all of our reflected lights. And we also found out just how freaking easy it is to do marble and oils. So, hey, Zambies, I hope everything's going. Oh, you're painting the noise, Marine. That's right. <laughs> and you already miss oils because, believe me, look. That's why I'm switching the sister bed. This is I'm in the middle of a tutorial series. We're switching it from acrylic to oils because we're just having too much fun with the oils. But I mean, well, this one's acrylic. This one's oils. You can see you can get the you can get that intensity with the oils for sure. It is some fun stuff. Uh, Zulamandi, how are you doing? Now, let the, I'm going to get some more dark there. Maybe some more dark over here. And we've got to get some edges over on this. Oh, we were working on the hand over here. We're working on the hand. I'm going to see just how thin we've got to go here. So, I, what it, what was it that you were missing most about the... Was it just that, that chill? Like, oh, yeah, you know, hashtag no rush because it's oils. Or just well, you know, yeah, you know the the blending and that sort of stuff. Uh, I'm, or is it just all of the above? Because there's so many cool things about oils, you're just gonna miss them all. Well, they just it's no, there's no way to avoid it. You will miss all of the fun things about oils. No, that's no rush. The ease of blending, yes, indeed. So I just chucked in a little bit of uh, cerulean blue there. You know what? I'm going to do a similar thing over there. I'm going to do a similar thing over here. Oh, yeah. Gee, reflected light much. Hello. Where is it down here? And over here, for that matter. Holy smokes. We have been remiss. We will now unremiss. And get that reflected light where the heck it goes. We're also trying to be very aware of just how thick the paint is or how thin the paint is. So here we're actually going with a little bit thicker paint. But because those previous layers were much thinner, it's going to stick there. Isn't it crazy, Eni, the intensity of the oils? I mean, the, the biggest comparison, the biggest comparison directly here. And actually, you can see both of these. Uh, they're on the YouTube channel. So this was with acrylics and fluorescent freaking paints. This was just oils and no fluorescent paints. I didn't even have the fluorescent. I didn't even know there were fluorescent oils at the time. This is still more intense than that. Yeah, this is lighter, but the colors themselves more deeper, more intense on the oil painted one than on the acrylic one. It's crazy. It, it, of all the things that I expected out of oils, that was not the thing, but then... When I when I really think about it, I say, wait a minute. How did I forget just how much translucency there is in the oils? How much more heavily pigmented they are? Especially your cadmiums and cobalts. Which, heck, if Dick Blick has a 50% off sale right now, I think I know what I'm doing as soon as this thing ends. I don't want to miss out on that. I'm hoping it's still going. So see, we're just we're taking advantage of some of our little lines here now where's my yeah we're just gonna clean that brush out real good with the paper towel and we're gonna take that little blob of cerulean blue right there we're gonna push that sucker around we won't blend it to death we'll leave some of it there oh let's see yeah let's let's blend this one out just a touch here we have to leave some edges. If we just blend all of the edges away, well, then we're not going to have a whole lot of shape, that's for sure. Oh, Doom of Malante. Uh, I, it was uh, earlier in the chat, 
it was I was informed that Dick Blick has a fifty percent off sale. I don't know what it is too. Someone else could maybe go and and look and see if it actually is everything or if it's just certain select products or not. So I don't I don't know for sure what's all on offer there. But if, if some enterprising human can go over there and and see if maybe the Windsor Newton colors are also part of that 50% off. All of a sudden, I might just have me some cobalt violet and cobalt blue to play with. So, oh, yes, we need to I keep forgetting right along here. We have nothing going on right there. Now we do. Now we need to get a little touch of the reflected light here. Again, we're just going to use the old thumb palette there. So yes, you can do plenty of detail with oils. Plenty of detail. Now we threw these guys over here on this back piece of armor. Now we've got to smooth some of that out, which we will do. Remember, we like to let that sit there for just a wee while. Yeah, we'll just blend. That was a little too harsh of a line there. Now it's a little less harsh. We got a blob of white here that now gets transformed into something a little bit different. We're going to grab some green over here. Nothing like green and purple together. So a little bit of reflected light there. A little more there. More reflected light down here. Again, thinking the the green armor what the heck let's just reflect some of that not gonna hurt anybody to do a little bit of reflecting of that uh, let's see Odilithan says cadmiums are going for 18 night that's about I think that's about similar uh, if you can see what the the cobalt violet is going for it that would be really handy because that one was about 20 something bucks I want, I want to say something like 23 to 27 bucks maybe more like 26 bucks that is definitely one that I am after and there's some other stuff like Prussian blue maybe even some indigo blue it's it's some of it's just nostalgia like the well the Terra Rosa t started out as nostalgia and then it became a necessity <laughs> It's like as soon as I touch that stuff again after oh my gosh you don't want to know how many years it became a new favorite. You know what? We need to get some dark up here too. That's just some of the umber right there. In fact, let's go back to... Ooh, let's do something new here. Let's take the... Oh, look at that. Let's take this ultramarine blue. We'll mix it with some of our white. Oh, thank you so much, Parm. That is appreciated. There's the happy dance. What? Oh, he, he just caught the... Wow, where'd that one go? Ooh, there's one. There's one. But it's right along the edge, and he's... Boom. He's got it. He says, that's mine. Thank you so much. Uh, so eight bucks for cadmium reds. Now, are those... Uh, I guess this is the other thing, too. Is it cadmium red hue? Or is it the actual genuine cadmium red? Because there's there's a couple of types of cadmiums. Now look at this. Look what we just added. Spark my ganja. As we got old man Logan with the follow. Thank you so much. That is appreciated. Because at that price, I'm thinking that that's got to be the cadmium red hue as opposed to the actual genuine cadmium red. It, it's tricksy that way. It is tricksy. Now I'm going to go back the other way here with some darks. Where are we at here? Right there. Okay. And then it comes down this way a bit. We are going to... Oh, let's take this that way. And now let's blend a little bit this way. We'll take, no, not this one. We're going to take this one here again. We'll take some of that paint away. And this is a little bit of a, 
There's too many sharp things going on all in the same place. We've got to soften up something. That is better. Let's get some of that cadmium, or sorry, cobalt blue in here. Oh, uh, the silver pharaoh has been redeemed by Lady B. Uh, let's see. Mellow mishaps, how are you doing? Well, it, we're actually, courtesy of Lady B, we are about to get to see a little bit of the tomb cities of Susenes. I'm just getting a little more of my reflected light there. Okay. Now, back in from 2012 to 2014, this was a project here where I learned... Oh my goodness, probably about 15 different materials, one of which was fluorescent paints. Uh, let's see, where did the minis come from for that army? Well, some are, well, most of them are Games Workshop. They're the old Tomb Kings miniatures, but see those two guys, and I'll be showing pictures of those. See that, those two big monsters up on top? Those are scratch sculpted by me. See the guy in the upper right-hand corner there? That was scratch sculpted, and so was the his buddy over on the left hand or right hand side. That also was sculpted by me. There was a lot of scratch sculpting in this, but this is the first real use of fluorescent paint was on this army, and now you can see it a little bit. See that fluorescent green? You can see the magenta. All of those blankets, I had to learn how to mass produce those out of green stuff. I made molds for all of that stuff. And here's another one. Here again, we. Basically, Scratch built that howda out of Sculpey there. You can see it's got its free hand. You can see all of the the glowy stuff there. So that is... Uh, let's see, do we have a result on that? Cadmium red light, cadmium red medium. Well, I'm going to have to go look because in that case... Oh, my gosh. Oh, there's also another uh, new type of brush that I'm going to try. Because after getting these and being pretty happy with these, I'm experimenting more with this kind of stuff now, too. Uh, let's see. The the Caracola. But let's see. Now, actually, those... Uh, so, again, that was my tournament army for Adepticon 2014. My 40K army was actually Sisters of Battle. And that's all on the blog. Again, you just wapeliusblogspot.com. You can check that out. So what do we do here? We just added a little bit of reflected light there. A little bit of it there. We're going to add a little touch more over here, too, on his shoe armor, I guess. Now, there's a little bit of a weird sculpting oddity going on over there. We're trying to manage that as best as we can. We are... I'm going to thin this down because we need an edge along here, too. A nice shiny edge, another shiny edge there, another one there. That chain of highlights, chain of highlights. Let's get a little bit of a nice bright spot there, another one there. Anytime we think we've got a hard edge, sometimes we find out we don't necessarily have one. So we're going to put these here, and now we will blend this side of them. We did it on the other shoes. Let's do it on this. We're going to grab some of that ultramarine blue again. And we're just going to get this. So see what we just did there? We're kind of, again, reflecting the marble onto this right over here on his little shoes. All right, so we've got our our green there. Let's get a let's get some of this dark ultramarine blue right there. We're gonna get some of that darker stuff right over here. I'm just gonna blend that into our green, and now we've got our white. I'm gonna just deposit some of that on ye old thumb palette. Dang, we've been we've kind of been waiting to set up that particular little light there. And what's going to happen right here? We are going to do a little bit of a light bang. 
So it's kind of right in the middle. It's sort of suspended there. But it can't all be hard edged like that. So we're going to go in here with our small blending brush. And look at that. Let's take some of that away. I'm also going to, if I can find the brush and, oh, here it is. How'd you get over there? We're going to go into some of our burnt umber, a little bit of our ivory black here. And let's really seal this off. We haven't quite sealed the deal on this darker line here. We did that side. Did we do this side? We did this side already. However, we need reflected light in here. We don't have much. We're going to change that by taking some of our green here. We really got to reflect the green here. Of all the places on this whole freaking miniature that needs green reflections of that marble, that's going to be over there. Do we maybe enhance that reflection a little bit more than it necessarily should be? Why not? Hashtag why not? Uh, let's see. Ended up picking the Williamsburg oil set. Uh, well, okay. That's uh. Thank thanks again, Al, for uh, divvying out that information because that's pretty critical. Does it say how long that sale lasts? Like, <laughs> do I have till later tonight to try and jump on that? Because that's like uh, that's a major change for what I'll be able to do here. If that sale is actually happening, I've got to I've got to take advantage of that somehow. Now here, as much as I like to say that the there be some kind of orange light, on, you know what? We'll say this is reflecting onto here. Let's go. Let's just kind of go crazy here. However, it's not going to be the fluorescent orange. It's it's going to be a little bit more of a terrorosa style orange here. Uh, we're gonna go up toward that's better. Oh, look at that! So now we got we're getting a little bit of contrast from our green over there, just by virtue of well, red versus green. Uh, let's see. I think Zoe said something. Uh, let's see, Zoe. I'm trying to figure out the language there. Oh, and Susieish, how are you doing? If there was a 50%, I'd be diving in too. Ah, uh, you were looking at the student line, okay? Yeah, we're we're uh, looking on the for the full-on Windsor Newton paints, basically the 37 mil tubes. You know what? For the heck of it, for the heck of it, I will just have a little bit of dirty fluorescent right there, ever so slight amount. Good enough. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm going to take some more of my green again. Because there's just too much dark right here. we got to reflect something. Ah, look at that. There we go. It's like, what's going on back there? That's just too much dark. All in one place. Hopefully you could still see that. I kind of just had to turn it this way. Oh, there we go. So there was a big old patch of dark there. When you have those basically uh, mid-tone desert, that's going to kind of help you lose your lighting effect. Ooh, speaking of which, that's, how is it going to reach here and not over here? It's got to hit this section. Not that it's got to be super bright, but there's got to be something there. Uh... I've never seen paints go any lower than current pricing, regardless of sale. I think uh, about the only other thing you can do is, you know, if you're, uh, what, like, uh, subscribe to their email thing. Sometimes they'll email you a special coupon or something like that. Yeah, it still doesn't matter. I still got to get me those that stuff, but it's probably going to have to wait till later in the week when I can finish up more commission things. But folks, actually check out last night's stream because that was working with oils on some pirates, Yar. 
and I'll show you what we were working on. I think it was a couple nights before that. In just a second. Actually, for all the new folks here that maybe haven't seen this, so here, let's show you some of the other things that we have done in oils here. All right, let's go back up. That one. There we go. So these were both painted on actually July 4th here. Those both painted in oils. But the one that everybody really likes to see is this one. So that is your half-sized human head bust. I weighed it. It said 18 pounds. I think it's still more than that, but it said 18 pounds. That is where we first premiere the fluorescent green, the fluorescent orange, the same fluorescent orange we're using now. I think it was actually the first time I got to use my cerulean blue. Actually, I think it was. Yeah. So we have definitely been able to kind of maximize what we can do with our oils. Now, you can see I really like my object source laying. These were all done with acrylics. Those are Reaper Bones figures. Those are nasty Reaper Bones figures. The cheap little plastic, that's all they are. Oh, that's actually Reaper Bones. So is that. Now, some more armor here. So this is one of my recent army painting series. You can see all of that. Look at all the shiny stuff, the reflections, the reflected colors. Oh, thanks, Eep Jeep. That is appreciated. And, well, and freehand. You know me. I love me some freehand. Now these, I would have loved to be able to paint those in oils. However, those were painted in oils. That's that's all oil paints right there. And actually, if I was able to get to the uh, to that other guy that I had earlier on, I would have tried to paint him in oils too. But we've just been diving in here, seeing what we can do with some of our shapes and surfaces. We're still going to go back in here with some darks now. Let's go back into ah here. Let's let's target some areas over here with some more darks. And by darks, we're talking about some brown, a little bit of our Payne's gray mixed in, just a touch of dark right there. It's this is kind of these series of striations. It was. Same thing on the dull Amroth nights. Anytime I'm doing the non-metallic metals, especially on anything that's supposed to be kind of shiny like this. Let's get a little bit of our dark up here too. We'll just grab something to use as a blending brush. So there's another one of those number eight rounds. The other one is probably laying on the floor somewhere. This one's basically exactly the same. Ah, there we go. So that smooths that out just a bit. You can see, actually with a fresh brush, how that paint kind of gets into the bristles. We're just going to smooth some things out here. And then we were, remember the, the free hand that we wanted to do there? We're just screwing around. Let's keep screwing around here. Let's do something with some gold here maybe. Now I've got this thinned out. I might have to go back in and actually make it thicker. Just doing some kind of laurel leaf type design here. Nothing terribly spectacular. Some I think people wanted to see a little bit of a freehand design, so we're just kind of sketching that in. Let's go thicker now and lighter because thick paint will stick to thin let's uh, get a couple of our these so let's see we're just going to lighten that up now and because it is thicker it wants to stick it wasn't sticking before it's sticking now that's what i mean where i tell you that the miniature is going to let you know. Miniature will let you know if you need to th thicken up that paint or thin it down.
Let's see if I can't zoom this in one more for you. I think I can. Yes, I can. There we go. A little closer for you. Let's pick up some more of this. See what we can do for our little... I don't necessarily want it to be like a skull, but maybe. Just get the rest of his face in here if we can, and then we'll make adjustments from there. So we'll make it a little bit lighter here, and then we'll go back the other way. Let's give him some, some eyes here. Now that we've gone thicker, let's see what happens when we go thinner onto this. And, oh, look, thinner paint sticks to thicker paint. Now we'll just go, we'll keep it simple here so we can move on to other stuff. We'll just do, for whatever reason, just a little skull, keeping it simple, nothing crazy. Something that we can do fast. Let's get a couple of things here to kind of finish up our as laurel leaves there. Oh, let me see. If there's one thing every GW miniature needs, it's more skulls. Well, yeah, if there's not enough skulls on the miniature, you darn well, you had flaming skulls here, and then you, oh, we could have, I could have, I guess, done a flaming skull over here. Well, we got a lot of fiery things going on, so I suppose that's that's adequate. Grab some of the lighter color here. Okay, and then we're going to do some darker shade. Let's grab some of this. Uh, let's do some brown and purple and gray down some of this. Okay. Maybe we even a, a touch of white here. Get a cheekbone or two going on this. I think we actually have to do thin that down, believe it or not. So again, this is just wet oils, over wet oils. It can be done. And that's just a nasty... Uh, just a little skull there, nothing fancy. So I, this is running right over some serious mold lines here, so we'll just see what we can do with whatever. I think that was supposed to be a hammer there. That's my guess. I see we got some rivets to finish off back here that need to be lightened up. We got some edges over here that also need to be lightened up. We haven't really touched those since uh, probably the beginning. I'm going to do some freehand on my corn banner beer. Yeah, I figured it had to be. It's just, uh, it's crazy after all of those those Baratheons and freaking talk about Hammerfest. Oh my gosh. Just hammers everywhere. And now we're back to hammers again. Now, I actually have a bunch more of the Stormcast, and, and not just the regular kind of line troops like this, but some of the specialty guys. I actually also managed to find some of the old Griffin Riders. Now, if someone can tell me, obviously, they don't go on those crazy 75 millimeter square bases anymore. If someone who can research that and tell me what size ovals those Griffin Riders go on, that would be nice to know. That would be very handy because I'd really like to do those and do some fancy bases for them. Now let's add some more green over here. I mean, nothing says gold's like green, so that's why we just added some over there. That could probably be tidied up, oh, just a touch. I'm going to bring some of this 
titanium white down here so we can start to do a couple of something's going to happen here. That is a little bit too vertical right there. So I'm going to do this. And I'm thinking via some blending we can ch change this around. I'm going to do a little bit of a change here. So see that vertical line right there? That's going to be changed. That's better. This, with our blending brush, is going to be brought down. That's better too. Yep. See, this is the nice thing about oils is that I was able to make that change there. There was just something that was bugging me. It just didn't seem right what was going on over there. I made a change. Made a quick little change. Not a big deal. I am going to take some of this green. Put that there. Uh, let's see. Auto mod held message for a reason. Let's see. I sent you that. I sent you the chat months ago. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, blend this. Blend this over here. Got my little blending brush, so hashtag why not. This bit of cerulean blue right here, that sat there for long enough. Remember I always say don't be hasty. Look at what I just did there. I pulled down on that end. I leave that end sharper. Just pull down. It's like pulling on a string. However, oh my goodness, we got to get something over there too. Just a little something here to indicate that is lighter. We'll blend this out. Oh good, you can see it. Like so. Does, does anything over here need to get a little bit smoother? That needs to get a little... Either get see the lighter or darker, one or the other. Something's got to happen there. Uh, I've been researching medium and texture gels with my basing. Huh, I've been down the rabbit hole of ideas. Here's some darker tones. That's it. That's what I needed. Sure enough, needed to be darker, and I think... I need to do that up here too. Yes, I did. And I think I need to do that over here. Right in that corner. Yes, I did. So this is uh, this is the part where you just kind of start to find little things, clean those up. Hell message for a reason. Um, there we go. Uh, let's get, take our purple here. Again, that's the ultramarine violet. It's a nifty little color, I gotta say. I'm just thinking we'll make that maybe ultramarine violet in here. We gotta get some of that up here. It, it's funny, I was just about to treat it like space marine stuff and make it just uh, some kind of a gray or whatever. And man, I haven't painted a Space Marine in forever. Actually, we, we are going to be painting some Space Marines in oils. That's going to be that's going to be a blast because I've been having a lot of fun on this. So, And I know I'm going to have fun on the Sisters. So I can't wait to be doing the Rubik Marines first with some oils. Okay, th something's got to happen here. Okay, at the yeah, it's yes. There's reflected light, but that's just kind of not doing much. I'm gonna grab some of the ultramarine, some of the brown here. Uh, liquid text is iridescent medium, which uh, could potentially use like metal medium. Okay, there's some dark. Yes, when in doubt, a simplify B add some darks, which we just did. Now we've got to. 
blend this here. We've got uh, too many sharp lines in one small area here. I think that takes care of it a bit. Do I need to do anything else? I need to get that in here. Yeah, let's uh, get some darker stuff going on the top of this hammer. That's our ultramarine blue there. And we are just going to darken this down. Let that mix. Let that blend. Mm, no. Yes. <laughs> we'll just let that get darker. I think that, that that creates a little more shape there now, I think. Oh, so let's uh, maybe go all the way back here to some of our fluorescent stuff. We'll just throw a little bit more of our fluorescent orange out here. Oh, yeah, the deep kin uh, on the... Uh, oh, was that the, the Giant's Causeway? That's right. The award-winning... Giant's Causeway piece. Mm, let's get. Let's see. We haven't seen this in a while. The fluorescent orange and the red. Well, that's actually actually more of a purple right there. But yeah, go back into our little bit of a flame here and finish this off. I'm gonna actually make that a little bit more of a reddish. I think it needs to be thinner. Yep, needed to be a little bit thinner. I was so tempted to put some of that right there, and I thought, wait a minute, that's actually kind of getting blocked, so that didn't make a whole lot of sense. This right here is going to be super translucent. Just be aware of that. For as, as translucent as some of the oils can be, the fluorescent oils, heck, the, the acrylic fluorescents are super translucent. That's kind of the nature of the beast. Oh, let's get some more. Let's darken this down just a bit here. There. So for... Folks that want, this is actually a three-part series. Oh, but that's going to be really hard to get to. Now, never mind. I'm going to take a drink, though. One second. Ah, so sorry about that. Do I need any more? I don't know if I need necessarily more light there, but I will do something like this. I some of the, the yellow and my fluorescent here. That's also going to make it more opaque. So this is one of the reasons why this covers is because we put that cadmium yellow in there. And cadmium yellow, well, that's going to cover. I would like to have some hints of light here right at this point in his shoes. See that? Just a couple little hints of it there. This... We, I think we've got to bring out some of the, some of these panels here in his armor. That that scale mail that's hanging there might just thin this down a little bit too. If it sticks, we know we made it thin enough, or it just will have to be thicker. So it's sticking, so that's all good. As much as I like that being so nice and orangey up there, it's kind of far away from where the flames are. So maybe we'll just uh, cut that down a bit. I'm going to see if I can't sneak some all the way up there. Again, it's maybe it's pushing the limits of what I should be doing with the as far as the reach of that object source lighting. But, I mean, it is a fantasy figure after all. Sometimes it just has to be fantasy. And, you know, I might even let a few touches of the orange reach all the way over there. I'm just thinking, going this way. It's 
to get a couple more of our I couldn't quite tell what the, some of the shapes were on his sword there but I am gonna act just for fun here just for the heck of it I'm gonna see if I like the idea of a little orange here like maybe there's some other torches or some flame yeah see that look at that just a couple of little touches there but just like anything else like like chipping and weathering it can get to be too much oh thanks dark side hobbyist it's appreciated i appreciate that cuz this is a uh, as much as i've seen all this you know the storm cast and stuff i've never actually had a chance to paint one myself and this is the man the first real genuine object source lighting oil paint thing that i get to do you're seeing it for the very first time and we get to see does the fluorescent orange really do its thing you know the other piece the caracola thing that was neat because it brightened it up but this is where you really need the fluorescent orange if, if forever if for the uh, for your object source lighting like this if you're ever going to need it this is where you'd need it here let's just going to hit that rivet right there maybe even a second oh yeah see a little second thing of firelight right there so just look at his little his little knee pad right there see how many different light sources there are going on there now right here there's pretty much nothing happening so I first thing I'm going to do is grab a brush to blend this out and after that I'm going to assess what needs to happen with this so I, I think I think if I go in here with some of the cerulean blue that's it that is a good plan and potentially some of our titanium was there and now it's going to lead into this and we're actually going to have to get that edge a little bit lighter uh, let's see dark side asks, would you be interested in playing some troll blitz from privateer press that could be interesting you know I never I don't think I ever got to paint any of those the only privateer press figures that I've really done would be the Legion of Everblight let's see a couple of the oh let's see the Ouro, the Ouroboros one and I'm trying to think of what else I got uh, not much I think a couple of Signar figures and that's about it for Privateer Press. But I mean you can obviously see how fun the that could potentially be painting those in oils. I mean with all the especially like the colossals and all of that stone and everything, that could probably be a whole lot easier painting that in the in the oils I would think. Well, pretty much anything's easier in oils. Boy, that's that's a little phrase that I've got to make there. That's got to be part of the Book of Wapple. As obvious as it is, it might still have to be part of the Book of Wapple. Everything's just easier in oils. Someone's got to hashtag me that for addition to the Book of Wapple. I need to, after blending this, i got to get some more dark in here. So we'll blend these two. That's that green that we put in. But... Watch what's happening right there as we blend that away. So we got a line there, but not a sharp edge there. One sharp edge at a time. Uh, let's see, FOD669 got the Windsor Newton oil starter set to try out, but considering the Dick Blake sale, are there any particular oils that I would recommend? Oh, thanks, Clover. I appreciate it. I would definitely say Cerulean Blue. I would definitely suggest a Cerulean Blue. It's... If you're interested in doing any kind of sky earth non-metallic, you'll be happy that you got it. And I'll show you here. Let's go down to. Uh, let's go over here to our halberds. Not uh, there. 
So you'll be really happy that you had Cerulean Blue because that's basically what you're seeing on all of those helmets and on their weapons. So that is one for sure. I would suggest maybe a Cadmium Red Light. If the, if the Red Deep is in there, I would go with a Cadmium Red Light. That would not be a bad thing to have. Oh, and, and Terra Rosa. Yes, get Terra Rosa. You will love Terra Rosa. Oh, that was fabulous. We used it actually a lot here. On this, there was a whole lot of Terra Rosa in the skin on this, obviously. So that was really nice. Well, thank, and it's it's so funny because, well, look at what we're doing here with our sister's army. It's a very similar type of base. Figures a little bit different, right? And it's just very simple, sculpy basing. Again, this is part of my army painting series on the Patreon page. It's the newest series, although we're actually about to start yet another one. There's usually several of them kind of ongoing all at the same time. Mostly because... Well, if I'm if I need to put foliage on a bunch of bases after the the stuff has been painted, well, I have to wait till the oil paints have dried. So that's some one of the reasons why and other practical reasons too. Yeah, let's get this uh we don't have much going on over here either. So this is another place where we're going to see if we can't Oh boy, you I'm sorry you can't see it, but I'm just going to hit this here while I'm thinking about it. Otherwise, I'll just forget. Okay, that's good. We need something going on. See, there's nothing right there. I know it's kind of blocked by his arm. Well, because it's blocked by his arm, that means we should actually paint something there. There should be quite literally something there. We are going to take some of this green and yellow here. And on his scabbard, I want to get a little flavor of something here. Then we're going to take our white. We're going to mix that with the burnt umber. It's kind of a grayish brown. Let's see what we can do over here on this purity seal type thing. Yeah, it doesn't have to be anything earth shattering there. We just gotta get some more lights. Uh let's see, I'm down to talk about doing some trolls. Uh actually you could just you could reach me on Facebook. It seems like when people well, you could send me a friend request here too, I guess. You send me the friend request and then, then you could uh would you be able to whisper me or something like that. So there's that too. You could also reach me through Instagram. And th there's the Instagram. I just Wapelius on Instagram, just like I'm Wapelius here. Now, let's get some more. Get some more gold happening over here. Again, on this little scabbard here. It's kind of a small scabbard, I'll tell you that. That's better. Let's blend that. Our little blending brush here. Give that just a little bit of a blend. Uh, not a mod, just act a... <laughs> oh, let's see, Mellow Mist. What's the difference in the oil paints when there's something like Cerulean Blue versus Cerulean Blue Hue? Basically, the straight-up, honest-to-goodness Cerulean Blue, it, it's going to be a much purer color. Yeah, when you blend it, it's going to. That's why, like here, when I'm blending this, it's it keeps it's, it's if it was the blue hue, as soon as you start to th blend it down or thin it down, you're gonna start to lose some of the color. Now this is the reason why I was talking about why I want to get the the actual cadmium red, and the actual cadmium yellow, and the actual cobalt blue, because to me. I need to know definitively one way or another is there really is the difference so discernible that you really should get it or is it really not a big deal and it's, and it's just you know what yes if you got the money fine go ahead and get the actual cerulean blue 
but to me the the difference was strong enough that I would get the actual cerulean blue. Well, we'll find out about the cadmiums. <laughs> Eventually, we will find out. Is it worth it to have genuine cadmium red, cadmium yellow, that sort of thing? Now, reflected light again. This is the crazy thing about armor, is that reflections will reflect off of reflections. It's sort of like the infinity thing. Because right here, basically, it's like it's reflecting off of itself. Crazy as it sounds, it does actually happen. And I can only recommend, speaking of Instagram, you go on there, you look at some of those armor cosplayers, and you'll be able to see them in a forest, actually dressed in their armor, doing fighty things. And you'll see just the difference that that makes. Uh, let's see. I watch the streams a lot, but I usually don't get to catch them live. Yeah, I know it's a... Uh, I'm hoping to be able to do more of these kind of North American friendly hours, I guess. Now, I will be streaming tomorrow. I'm hoping to start by 2. Whether that can actually happen, we'll... I, I never really know because basically when I can crawl out of bed in the morning or whenever it is, I never know what kind of weird things are waiting for me. So sometimes I can have a plan, and that's usually the first thing that gets nuked for the day is the plan. But my, my goal is to stream from somewhere around 2 to 8, then stop and... I'll be doing a podcast with the War Room folks, and that's going to take place around 9 p.m. Central Time. I'll just keep on painting, and actually, I'll be—I'm going to be prepping the figure for tomorrow. It's going to be oils again. It's going to be a rather complex thing. It's from Ouroboros Miniatures. Ah, okay. Well, let's see. Now, if 2 a.m. here, I believe, is around 6 p.m. No, maybe around 5 p.m. your time. Oh, I, I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to look at my phone. I'm not going to cheat. So if it's 8 o'clock here, it would probably be somewhere in the mid-morning there. Here, let, let's do a little cheaty thing here. What do we see? Oh, yeah, okay. There we go. So it's 8 o'clock. Oh, it's 9.27 here. Ah, oh, it was pretty close. Look at that. 12.27 in Melbourne. Yeah, that's not, a, that's not too bad. That was not too shabby of a guess. Now, there's too much light going on here. Too much light. We're going to go down. A little darker here. Uh, that sounds like the pigments change are slightly different. I think the only hues they have are cadmium yellow deep and pale hues and cadmium red deep. Yes, I have the same thing. You got the same as me. And, well, <laughs> instead of you getting it yourself and being disappointed or something like that, just let me get it. And then this way I can tell you it's, it's either... It's either a must or it's a eh, you know, if you want to do it, get it. Let's get uh, get some purple there. I want to get a couple of these rivets right back here. I don't know if you can see them. There's one over here. There's one over here. And I want to do that. There we go. Ah, uh, that was a complex thing for just such a simple little result, but such is life. We've also got to get some stuff going on down here. In here. And that that belt certainly needs something. <laughs> it needs a whole lot of something here. It's just kind of flat sitting there. Uh, let's see. Mellow Mishaps is prepared to continue to live 
vicariously in the world of oil paints. That that's uh that's what you call let the uh, let the volunteer go out in front, and if the volunteer is still alive later, you know it's safe. Oh, what the heck! Let's do a little bit more of our white with that terra rosa sort of mix there. That's better. And we'll do one more round of that. Not that much there. Got a little bit of a crazy buckle thing going on over here. I want to grab me some of my cerulean blue over here. So I'm going to have to hit that one too. Okay, good to know. But let's do some stuff on his mask slash helmet here. Have to make it vaguely resemble the other side of things. And I'm thinking I've got to go thicker with this white. If I want it to stick here, it's going to have to be thicker. Sure enough, yep. Had to be thicker. Couple of lighter areas here on that helmet again, going with the thicker paint there. This needs to maybe be lighter there, and then I think it might just actually need. I'm going to go with some of this crazy green over here because we've got it we got no reflected light this is supposed to be gold how the heck is there no reflected light over there now oh, there is now now there is more reflected light there and just a bit more on the orange side of things let's get ourselves a light highlight on the end of the scabbard here. Got everything else but that. That takes care of that little edge right there. There just wasn't much happening and I'm even gonna throw a little bit more of a light here on the purity seal for what it's worth. Oh, let's see. Cadmium is much more opaque than the heat. It's go. Oh, it's got to be Drax. It has to be. That that's why I want to just. I want to get those and really, really, really test them out and see just what the difference is. Especially when you start thinning them down, doing all that kind of stuff. Yeah, let's get a little couple of bright highlights there. Uh, I've spoken a couple of times. Generally, I just lurk or watch the episodes later on. Uh, let's see, the Wampleville Kool-Aid seems especially good. Oh, that's making me thirsty. It also makes me want pie and cookies and more pie and ice cream. But not the fish ice cream from earlier. That That's lost its appeal to me, the fish ice cream. Although it is brain food, we did determine that. That fish ice cream will definitely increase your brain capacity, but then maybe directly reduce it by the fact that you just ate fish ice cream. I don't know. Not quite sure how that works. Uh, let's see, is that why you have Melbourne as a time zone on your phone? No, oh, sorry, Lady B. That's been on there for years. It goes back to well, you you know about me and Aussie Rules football, and I needed to know when the Western Bulldogs, when their game was going to be playing here, so that I could listen to it basically on the radio, for all intents and purposes. So that's why that's why Melbourne's, and that's why also you see London on there too. 
because well that's more for the the streaming times so yeah, it, it's been on that for uh, probably about three-ish years now I'm thinking or however old the phones are Yep, that's uh that's why I went with that. Oh, I know what we need. Ah, I almost forgot this over here. Almost forgot this. Oh, the Roy experience is I can't believe I'm actually gonna get to watch an entire live stream. Well I appreciate you being here. I really do. I just think of how many you have no idea how many nights I've just basically when I'm not recording, well, and even when I am recording, it's just me here by myself, talking to myself. And just, there's nothing like recording somewhere between two and five hours of tutorials in an evening, every other evening, essentially just talking to yourself. <laughs> Maybe that just uh, explains why a lot of things. Now, let's get some lights over here on this side. We've got some of those to do. We've got an edge to claim over here. We have an edge to claim over here. Another one over here. And three small ones over there. Again, that's all wet oil paint over wet oil paint. Oh, gee whiz, we got nothing going on with his hand over here. So, let's see what we can do. Give him some fingers here. My goodness, how did I not see this earlier? Ah, I think you can see that. Um, it's, again, nothing earth-shattering here. We just got to give that some kind of shape. We got to give this some light over here. Wow. We got no light over here. The other hand is super developed. This one somehow, not so much. We'll get some reflected light here again. So see, we got this light, dark light again. That is your classic, very classic, kind of non-metallic reflected light. Just lightening up that purity seal there. <clears throat> Normally, I like the ends of those to be darker. Uh, let's see. If you want to support the channel, join the Patreon. Yeah, the... Uh, oh, the, hey, Cidrian. Let's see. Swear by Cadmium Red. But people argue that... Oh, Pearl Red is good enough. So yeah, when you do the, the Patreon thing, if you do... Well, if you do the Army Painter Pledge for 15 bucks... 15 bucks a month, you will have <coughs> access to the entire library going back seven years. Basically every tutorial video that I've ever made. And there is enough to be basically around 500 hours worth of videos. So, like Lady B says, if you want to see a, a you-know-what ton of videos on terrain, look at that. Look what we just added there. That's a little bit of grayed down ultramarine blue it falls right in between that bright highlight there and right in between our green these are all those little striations oh we got nerd house minis how are you doing well as long as Hello, a... little hobbits. Spark my ganja. well gee we have another highly appropriate name thanks so much for the follow vandus storm hander hand hammer storm hander why am i saying that now, hashtag no sleep. That's probably why. That might have something to do with it. I'm just speculating. Now, what I am going to do is take a one of my blending brushes here. Just going to drag this along. Yes. We also have to do something back here. There is just absolutely nothing there. I'm going to see if I can't sneak in. Just a touch of this orange up here. Yeah, that's good. 
just sneak it it kind of darkens it down but keeps it in that general family there doesn't have to be very light but it just has to be there let's grab a little bit of the cadmium yellow here just gonna try and thin this down see if I can't get a little something right here kind of like that ultramarine blue we we did on the back of this ah that's better bit of an edge there and now a couple more things so again we're just trying to reflect this all the way up there are you really gonna see it that much not really I'm even gonna blend that out just a bit more So it's there, but not there, and we'll go now the other way with this. So we'll take some of our layer tone here. Let's uh, work on this. I hope you can see that. It's going to be tough for you to see. Well, you can see we're adding a couple of an edge there, and look what's going to happen right here. So now we've got kind of a horizon line going on, and... We've got the reflected light down here. Again, horizon line there. Maybe a touch of reflected light there. What's happening over there? Mm, maybe not too much there. Let's see what we can do with that handle. Got some of our brown. Hit that. Something needs to happen over here with this that light in the back. We're going to take some of our cerulean blue and a little bit of our ultramarine here. It's a bluish gray. We're going to lighten that up a touch and I've got to break up this shape over here. It's just a big old dark shape. Can't just have a big old dark shape like that. This also it's neat to have that there but I think I'm better off actually having some dark right there. Yep. Maybe even a little touch of dark right there. There we go. Let's see. Oh, and Nerd House May is still in the house there. And El Capone, let's see, going to lurk while I finish up assembling this cabin for the hobby room. Uh -huh. you, that that's Ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth? I've I don't know how many times I have reworked this room alone just since April. Once it became apparent that well there was going to be a whole lot of streaming going on, that had to this room had to change a lot. And that was that process was not very fun to say the least. I need to add a couple of. brighter lights in a couple places here some that aren't necessarily orange in nature like over here once again on whatever the little purity seal type thing is here get some lights on that now for some darks burnt umber here can't go wrong with that in between these uh, little fingers right here. I think some of that got a little lost in all of the initial shuffle doing the object source lighting. Oh, let's see. Make that also darker. We've got to these couple of rivets right here. We're just going to maybe see if we can't do a quickie pin line wash on some of this. And it's basically the same kind of stuff that say uh, the vehicle guys would do on the uh, vehicle rivet. Let's get a little bit of dark up here. Hint of a dark shape there. I'm going to darken this down over here. 
Not quite sure what's happening with that, but we also, that's a little too horizontal, or too vert. yeah, we need to make it more vertical. That's more like it. See if I can't get me a little light here right on the top edge of this, especially over there, and then one line right there and a similar thing over here. That helps. So again, constantly finding sources of reflections here. It is supposed to be shiny armor after all. It should be reflecting lots of stuff. Oh, let me see. I'm just going to... Yeah, I think we are... Uh, Vanda Storm, yeah, it's not a full army painted like that. Oh, geez, that is, uh, that's just another day that ends in Y around here. So I've had to paint basically apocalypse-sized armies of this size here. So let's, uh, so we've got our Necrons and our TMM. Well, entire fleets of Cruel Seas, but then let's start to go into some of the army painting stuff here. So these are part of my, again, some of my army painting series. So entire forces here. That's not, you're not seeing the cavalry there. Again, Dol Amroth, entire armies here. Army of the Dead, Morgul Knights. And then it gets really interesting as we get into the Song of Ice and Fire because I've done several units like this we have pyromancers everybody with object source lighting and free hand oh and then look at this i did f let's see what's uh 48 so 48 inventory there was four units 12 of these guys uh yes with those bases that's again just it's another day that ends in y and here's some more units again that actually was done in contrast paints right there. That was done in oils. That was done in oils. We have, uh, that was actually done in the, the acrylics again. More acrylics. So, yep, there is plenty of stuff actually we're going to be. Oh, yeah, and those guys, that was another contrast paint. Oh, that's another one of my army painting series right there. Those warrior sons. And this is going to be another new series right here. I'll be painting these guys again. Showing you how it basically starts with the basing and takes you all the way through the painting. So, yep, because, well, here's my sister, a battle army. This was the first color test figure. And an army painted like that. Uh, let me see. I think we're all caught up on chat. We need to get, oh yes, yes, we are once again deficient in some highlights here in a crucial area. We'll do some of that. I want to say right here, maybe not quite so much. Let's get some light on the bottom of his eye there. Something happening there along that edge. Let's make that edge a little brighter, too. Let's give him a, another couple of edges here along that. And now we're going to go back to our brown over here. We'll mix that with some of the... You know, that's going to be an interesting... Oh, there's a nice little sepia tone right there. Oh, let me see. Just looking up here. I think we, yep, I think we're all caught up on the chat. I know sometimes I take a little pause to go and look at that. It's just, it's hard for me to necessarily see everything that's going on all at the same time. We need something more over here. And I'll just take it as... Bringing in some of this kind of a lemon yellow color 
over into here. We need some more light, dark, light. That's helpful. Oh, thanks, Lady B. I appreciate that. I just, uh, I had no idea what anything was because I, I just hadn't really even looked at any of these close up. So it's kind of, it's weird to actually finally see them close up and be doing stuff on them. Oh, let's lighten this up a tad more here, shall we? Right in here. Maybe with a bit more of the yellow. Oh, we're just going to get an edge onto that. Let's bring in one of our kind of medium-sized blending brushes. Because we've got a lot of sharp edges all in one space. We are going to blend some of these together. There we go. When in doubt, just do a little blending. That is helpful. Oh, I think we actually, speaking of reflected light, let's get a little bit of our green over here. And it's very grayed down because of all the junk that's in our brush. And that's just perfect. That is just what we need over here. I might even go a little lighter with that. That's it. That is what I was looking for. What is this old knob here on the top of his hammer? Let's just get that old darker. Oh, thanks. Thank you so much, Roy. That is appreciated. Oh, let's do that over here. Let's do that over here. So you can see, look at what I'm doing with my thumb here. So this is held in my hand. Thumb braces the hand, and there we go. Very simple. I'm going to do that again, essentially making myself a little bit of a mall stick out of my own hands. Now this also... Boy, see, there's there's got to be reflected light over here. Everywhere you turn around, there's got to be reflected light. Look at that. So this is some of the ultramarine blue, which is going to go right in there. Oh, look, it just happens to line up nice, nicely with that. It's not terribly bright. It's just kind of a mid-tone, just kind of sitting there, minding its own business. Here, let's do a little bit of reflected light on this, too. Can't be doing reflective light everywhere else and not there. Now, I'm thinking on the hammer, maybe. We'll just darken that down. And Speaking of cerulean blue, let's see if we can add some cerulean blue into some white over here and see what happens. Just like we've been adding reflected light everywhere else, let's put a little reflected light on that hammer. So it looks like maybe a hammer and a sword there. So let's, I don't know, maybe make it more sword-like. Where's my, oh, there it is. So my darker ultramarine blue here. Come back with that thin down. Just give that some kind of final shape there. Ah, I see I need to get the I need to get some darker something over here too. Yeah. Oh, say there. So to save my voice for tomorrow, because I'm going to need it for around about 10 hours or so between my live session and the podcast that I'll be doing over on that on the war room there. Ah, just needed that a little bit of dark. It, essentially, the light's casting shadow on that handle. So let us see who is maybe available for rating purposes real quick here. Just go look. 
I think we've been able to do some nifty things here. Some fun NMM, some fun OSL.